high school sports fans. Are you following Varsity Media on our YouTube channel? For the best coverage of New York high school sports, make sure you head to youtube.com slash varsity media. Three easy steps. First, hit that like button, and then be sure to subscribe. And finally, tap that yellow bell to be notified of all of our upcoming sportscasts. Thank you for following Varsity Media on YouTube. High school sports fans, Varsity Media Pass is the exclusive live stream partner of Nassau County Playoffs. For semifinal and championship coverage of boys and girls lacrosse, softball, and baseball, head to varsitymediapass.com to order. Varsity Media is the home for New York high school sports. Afternoon in Nassau County sees two of the best conference three teams on Long Island as the Manhattan Indians take on the Beth Page Golden Eagles on the Varsity Media Sports Network. And a pleasant good afternoon, everybody. Alongside Rob Anderson, I'm John Perez. And, Rob, this is a good one here today. These two teams met late last season with the playoff berth on the line, and it was Manhasa getting a much-needed victory over Bethpage that would get them into the playoffs for the second straight year as the Indians come into this game at 1-1 one one off a 4-2 and two win over Herricks the other day. And this is a Manhasa team that is very young from a year ago. They've got a ton of juniors and seniors on this team, but they're going to be led by two of the best players on their roster as well as returners. It's Luke Grillo as well as Trey Zafiro. Um, as you see, the Washington College commit and, of course, the future Lafayette ball player. Yeah, we got Luke Grillo there, and he's uh, a pitcher as well, a Washington College commit, outstanding glove over at first base. And the one that got injured last year, and he's back in Zafiro, part of that Zafiro clan. Three brothers, he's the youngest of three. And Trey, pitching six scoreless in his last game on the mound. And today, playing out in the field, he'll be at shortstop. Yeah, and of course, today's impact players are brought to you by the Long Island Huskies. Sign up today with Brian Tatelman, the former College World Series Stony Brook Seawolf uh, today. And so that is... Beth pa that is Minhasset. That's Beth Page over there. And, of course, they got two of the top players in Conference 3 as well. And as we take a look, it's Vito Leonardo and Ziggy Cohen. And Vito Leonardo, big boy, six foot two, and he uses his size well. He's got the potential to do damage in that lineup at any point. Also has a fantastic glove. And then over on the other side there, Ziggy Cohen. Ziggy was the number three pitcher last year, played third base, and is a great defensive player. Solid at the plate, and he's going to be one of the impact players here for the Golden Eagles. Yeah, like we mentioned, these two impact players brought to you by the Long Island Huskies, current owner and head coach of the 15U team, Brian Tatelman, member of the 2012 Stony Brook Seawolves College World Series team. If you're interested in learning more about the LI Huskies, visit lihuskies.com. They're looking for a 17U team. So, of course, if you're looking for a home this summer, no better place to be than the Long Island Huskies. And with that said, let's meet the starting nine for the Benhasset Indians looking for their second win of the year as Trey Zafiro will lead things off. Of course, these starting lineups brought to you by the LI Huskies. It's Trey Zafiro, Parker Madden, Tyler Hadzizianis, along with Michael Diorio, Mateo Karcic, Lucas Larian, Luke Gorillo, James Rowan, and Gavin Corfine. Somebody who was not mentioned is Michael Harrington. He won't bat. He'll be in left field for Manhasset today as they go up against one of the best pitchers and returning pitchers out of the pen. It's Joe Resta. Yeah, Joe Resta looking for his first team win of the year. The righty pitched uh, and in relief mostly last year, tried to get a few innings in. He features that fastball, and according to his coach, when that curveball gets going, John, He's unhittable. Yeah, a 2 0 record last year, 4.78 ERA, 15 strikeouts, and 21 innings pitched. And of course, this 
starting pitcher brought to you by the Long Island Huskies as Resta wearing the sunglasses. And we're seeing a lot of shades today, obviously, with the solar eclipse that happened in the 3 o'clock hour. Uh, it's finally sunny here. It looked like nighttime before, but pretty cool uh, here as well. And both of these teams, and I think no sport more apropos to deal with uh, the weather uh, than, of course, baseball. And we'll see how that affects the infielders and outfielders today. A lot of schools starting their programs late today, junior highs and JV practices canceled because of the eclipse. But we've got some varsity baseball here, and they're wearing their sunglasses, not their eclipse shades today. A little bit of wind and slightly overcast now, but we're ready for some baseball. I just want to know where everybody got those solar eclipse glasses because when I left my apartment today and even uh, driving – on the street and see people with the shades on and I don't know if they just purchased them on Amazon or what the deal was but either way they got them uh, pretty quickly and uh, which was cool to see I mean we had been given word over the last week that an eclipse was happening we had an earthquake as well um, so if you're playing weather lottery bingo here um, you're almost there especially if you got the four corners yeah, we're just waiting on a blizzard at this point but please uh, no <laughs> and our executive producer saying that at, at the schools they were giving out the eclipse glasses so Everybody getting prepared for it today. Yeah, no, which is definitely good uh, to see as uh, Joe Resto with a couple more uh, warm-up pitches, and he'll deal to uh, Trey Zafiro. And we mentioned Trey Zafiro at the beginning. We'll talk a lot about him and just a talented two-way player for Manhasset. He's the ace, and so what's different here than in the cap, really swing it, uh, especially uh, with a young infield as well. You put the ball in play, anything can happen in high school baseball. And like you said, this, this is the – kind of game where both of these teams need to start getting their legs out under them, start getting some hits on the board. Uh, one and one Manhasset looking to try to get their first win for their pitcher today. And Beth Bay just looking to get a victory and maybe a little revenge for last year. Yeah, this was a Beth Page team that lost the division, winning the county title a year ago. And boy, is division something else. We'll talk about them later in the broadcast. But Trey Zaviro leads off, and the shortstop smacks the first pitch on the ground to second. Max Razio is up with it and fires it over to first. One pitch, one out. Yeah, and they'll throw it around the horn, making it look easy. There's Zafiro first pitch swinging. That was a fastball right down the middle. Zafiro making contact, and it's nice to see not scared to swing out of the gate. Well, and that was the approach um, that Manhasset head coach Anthony Sarapika said as Parker Madden watches low for ball one. He said he was hired last year at the end of February, which only gives you about a month's time to get acclimated to the team, install whatever systems you have. So he's had a full off season now, and a big part of that uh, approach coming into this year was their approach at the plate. And he said, if you get a good pitch right away, don't be afraid to swing. You know, you hear a lot of those coaches talk about, uh, you know, waiting for your pitch. Nice fastball there. Uh, 0 for 1 with an RBI and a strikeout against Herricks last Thursday. And someone who is a very talented catcher could also play in the outfield, only a junior, but someone who's very even keel. And one interesting thing about Madden is he's athletic and has speed, so that's why he's at the top of the order. 2 2, skied out to right, falling fast, and it's down for a base hit. As Will Lynn scoops it up and fires it into the diamond, and Manhasset has a one out base runner. And a nice little inside out there to go the opposite way. Beautiful protective swing there by Parker Madison. It looks like he just waited for his right pitch. Had that bat up on his shoulder a little bit on those strikes right down the middle. And then laces one the opposite direction. Made the turn. Thought better of it. And the first runner on base. Madden with good speed off of first as Tyler Hadzianis steps up to the plate. Hadzianis the opposite number against Resta and trying to help his own cause. Move his battery mate over to second base there. And Zianis 0 for 3 with a strikeout against Herricks on Thursday. And someone who really built his confidence last year in their loss to division. And I know that we're bringing up division a lot early on. But he threw four scoreless innings. Runner goes, hit to short. This should be a double play. A.J. Popoff makes the catch, snaps it over to first, and the inning is over. Joe Resta faces the minimum and keeps Manhasset off the board. We're scoreless going to the bottom of the first on the Varsity Media Sports Network. You're watching the Varsity Media Sports Network, the home for New York high school sports. 
Varsity Media offers live streaming services for any sport. With human beings behind the camera, you can expect the proper coverage angles during each game. We offer customizable options such as live scoreboard, multiple cameras, instant replay, graphics, and even announcers. Find out how you can save $100 off a live stream package with Varsity Media by calling 516-403-2050 or email Ben at varsitymedia.net. Did you just have the best athletic year of your life? And now you want to show it off to college coaches? Well, let Varsity Media help you. Varsity Media's college recruiting videos show off your unique skills to help you land a spot on the team of your dream school. We'll provide music, spot shadow effects, and a link to send to your next coach. Contact us today for more information. Don't rely on word of mouth or cold emails. Let Varsity Media help you take your game to the next level. Joe Resta faced the minimum in the top of the first inning, and now it is Tyler Hadzianis to deal to this batting order for Beth Page. Looking for their first win of the year, but Hadzianis so good on the mound, the junior. Yeah, that big righty. Coach said he's got ice in his veins, and this year his velocity is up from last year. His fastball is about 80-82. He does feature three pitches. He's got that fastball, curve, and a slider, and like you said, looking for the first win of the season. And he'll face this Beth Page lineup, that is. Looking to get some offense on the board. Antonio Porcelli will lead it off, but let's meet the rest of the Golden Eagles as Porcelli, the left fielder, starts it off with A.J. Popoff at shortstop. Ziggy Cohen, the designated hitter, and ace for the Golden Eagles. He'll get the start on Thursday. Vito Leonardo at first base. Joey Luparello behind the plate. Will Lynn is the right fielder. Joe Resta, the number seven hitter and pitcher. Max Diorazio is the second baseman. Liam Walters is at third base and not batting for Beth Page, uh, like we mentioned earlier with the DH out there, is uh, Joe Calori. He'll be in center field. And Porcelli, a freshman, one of those guys with some good strength. And we'll see if they have that same aggressive approach that we saw out of Manhattan, if they're going to be swinging or looking. Yeah, this is a Beth Page team that lost a lot from a year ago. A couple of all-county players, most notably Kyle Brindisi. And the first pitch, line to right, and it's down for a base hit. So Porcelli swinging early, and he's got a leadoff single. And the second one today we saw go the opposite way. Again, a nice little inside-out swing on a fastball in. One, two. And now the leadoff hitter on first base. And we'll take another look and a good piece of hitting to serve it in the right. Number five, A.J. Popoff. So Porcelli, the runner at first, and this brings up A.J. Pavlov, the senior, one for three with a strikeout against Plain Edge. That was a 6-1 loss to the Red Devils. Back-to-back -back losses to begin the year for Beth Page, and this is a Golden Eagles team that was supposed to have four games last week, but because of the inclement weather um, and rescheduling, uh, only able to play one game during the week, and then, of course, against Plain Edge on the weekend. 1-0, slammed in the ground, foul, 1-1. And you can see uh, Porcelli over there taking some big jumps. It was that aggressive running that got Manhasset wiped off the board, whether it was a hit and run or a steal and a swing. We don't know, but led to two outs on that line drive. Porcelli with a real big lead again here. The look over. Got him in a rundown. Caught him napping, had to be honest, and then the tag from the shortstop Zafiro, and Porcelli's wiped off the board. Couldn't write that one any better. That lead was a little too much. I mean, you know, from where we're sitting, too, you see him taking those jumps. The lean was big. Hadzianis recognizes it right away, the throw over, and it's an easy out and a waste of a leadoff hitter. And a 1-1 one -one count to A.J. Popov. And curveball sits high, 2-1. You got to like the awareness there of Hazianis to notice it right away. You know, he took one little peek over, really didn't indicate much more than that, but the throw over, perfect. Comes a 2-1. Fastball chopped on the ground, left side. Fielded by James Rowan. He's up with it. Fires high and off the glove of Gorillo. And A.J. Popoff is aboard. See how they rule that. I'd imagine it's an E5. Either way, back-to-back -back base runners 
Foreman has it, but they'll start over again with Popoff, the runner at first. Nice job by Parker Madden there to back it up and make sure no more damage was done. Throw was a little high, like you said. And I'll tell you, they, they wish they didn't get that pickoff right now. You'd have runners probably at first and second base. This will bring up Ziggy Cohen. Cohen, the Malloy University commit, future Lion, will play in the ECC. Runner goes on the first pitch. It's in the dirt. Throw down to second. Not in time. It's a stolen base for Popoff, and the Golden Eagles have a runner in scoring position and one down. So out of the gate. Golden Eagles looking to be the Flying Eagles, right? Sending two guys or one caught leaning, but they're looking to run again, Hadzianis, and that sometimes could unnerve a pitcher. We'll see how he handles this with the runner over on second. Check of the runner not once but twice. Comes home with it, breaking ball, and it hit him. Right in the backside, and Cohen's aboard. And that's the other thing too, Rob, and the transition from being uh, one of the top relievers to now a starter is uh, some of the pressures that Hadzimianis might be feeling, especially his first start of the year. Sure, and again, the aggressive running, you know, that, that does unsettle a pitcher and, you know, no sooner after the stolen base, first batter getting hit and runners on first and second. Here's Vito Leonardo. 0 for 2 with a walk and a run scored against Plain Edge. Runners on first and second in the first pitch. Curveball dips down and in. 1 and 0. Again, a good job there by Madden to control that pitch in the dirt. And we'll see if the lefty can at least move the runners over here. Leonardo is senior. 6 2, has really good size and fields his position well. That's why he gets the start early on at first base, but it's really the pop in his bat that helps him as well. Madden wants it down and in, and it skips off his shoulders. Runner goes, good bounce, throw over to third, not in time. Well, that took a fortunate bounce to hit home plate umpire Steve Gross, and off the ricochet, Madden fired over to third, but Popoff got in under the tag. Should be a wild pitch. Everybody moves up 90 feet, and now a couple of runners in scoring position. And you said it. We'll get another look here. A gratuitous bounce and a beautiful slide in at third base, not just showing the speed but the technique. Folks at home, that's how you slide. Good hitters count to the cleanup hitter, Leonardo. That's be honest with the low set. And that's in the dirt. Skips past Madden. Runner coming home. Popoff slides and he scores. Run tri uh, ball trickles towards the mound. No advancement by Cohen, but Beth Page gets on the board on the wild pitch. As they lead it 1 0 in the first. Ziggy Cohen thought about it when that throw went errant to the pitcher, but thought better of it, stayed at third. And here's another look as that pitch just skips past Madden and this time the umpire and the play at the plate not in time. Bad, a good throw, just not caught. And again, you've got Cohen now at third base. Leonardo's going to take all the way, and it's a strike on the inner half, three and one. And, John, you got to wonder if, again, the running game, the, the pressure that they're putting on Hadzianis is getting to him a little bit. You know, already north of 15 pitches, and he's only retired one batter. 3-1 in the dirt. And we'll have runners on the corners for Joe Luparello. So right now, they're probably hoping that that walk is a blessing in disguise. Try to force a grounder, look for a double play. But runners on the corner here. Well, and this will send out the pitching coach, Rob Backus. To talk to his starter, Backus, a very good career at Queens College, graduated in 2022. Uh, the year before, Queens won their first ECC title since the 1998 season. Brings a lot. He's a Long Island guy, and uh, I'm sure he didn't expect to come out in the first inning, but trying to settle down his young arm. Sure, this is definitely one of those meetings where you try to settle down your pitcher, remind him that they're in the game, it's only one across the board, and again, try to induce the grounder, look for the double play, probably have the infield in at this point. No need to think about that runner at third right now. It's all about trying to get that double play. And not a lot of speed at first base right now. Well, and you saw in the previous shot, Rob Fisher, the head coach for Beth Page in his 20th year. He's a Rhode Island native, moved over to Long Island when he played college ball at LIU. And Joey Luparello at the plate, a left-handed hitter. We'll see if they put Leonardo in motion. Oh, 
A single, an error, a hit by pitch, and a walk. Already a run on the board in the bottom of the first. Runner not going. The first pitch breaking ball misses low for ball one. I'll tell you, though, Cohen certainly making it uneasy down there. He's hopping and bopping all over the place. You saw Madden give him a look down, but put it in his pocket. Luparello hitless in three at bats. He struck out twice against Plain Edge. And the 1-0 sits inside, 2-0. and Right now, they just need strikes. You know, I think he's got to go to the fastball. He's still throwing that curve a little bit, but we've seen a few in the dirt, two wild pitches. Not a lot of speed at first with Leonardo. And the 2-0 low again. And three straight out of the zone against Luparello. And that one nowhere near the plate. It was outside and low. He's got to just settle down right now. Hazianis just needs to find the glove. Luparello takes all the way. And four straight misses. And the second walk of the inning as Luparello will park it over to first. And that'll load the bases for the right fielder, Will Lynn. So one out on the board and the base is juiced. Only one hit this inning. A fielding error, a few wild pitches and some walks. And the Golden Eagles in a prime position to do some damage here with Will Lynn. Lynn only a sophomore, two-way player, has a good bat. And the first pitch high pops out of the glove of Madden. No advancement, 1-0. It's interesting, right, Rob? When you have a team that was so veteran late in a year ago for Beth Page, um, you could just sharpie in the lineup a year ago. Now, Robert Fisher on the other end trying to get as many at-bats to as many players as possible because, quite frankly, he doesn't know what he has. And if you're going to hit well or field well, you'll be in the lineup. And Lynn attacks it foul, 1-1. One and, one. and we were speaking earlier, you know, because of... The weather so far, there's been a lot of rain. To me, the first week of the season, the practice week, you thought you were at the beach. We were down in Florida. It was beautiful. And then all of a sudden, New York became New York in April. And the rain and whatnot, thank God, the eclipse didn't damage anything today. But a lot of ball not played because of the weather. Bases full of Golden Eagles. A one nothing lead, bottom of the first. 1-1 one, one coming. And that hits the outside corner and had Giannis ahead, 1-2. and two. Good job by Hadzianis there now to show a little bit more composure, and he's in the driver's seat. Pitches count one and two here. He's got a little wiggle room. See what he goes with. Looking to roll a pair and keep Beth Page just to a one nothing lead. One, two. That's outside. Deuce is wild. You know, you know he probably wants to keep this ball low in the strike zone, but at the same time, after bouncing a few, he's got to be cautious and careful with it. Two and two count. I think he should go inside and low and see what he can get done here. That's where Madden sets up. Here's a 2-2. Slight foul down the right field line. And a good fight by Lynn. And that one's going to reach the parking lot. I hope you didn't park over there, John. No, I got dropped off today. <laughs> okay. There you go. So 2-2 count here, and we'll see where Madden sets up for this one. And Giannis gets the sign. 2-2 pitch. Fastball, slammed foul off to the right side, and a good at-bat by Will Lynn to keep it alive. Yeah, really good, just making some contact. And again, Madden setting up that low inside, trying to get that pitch down there. We'll see if Giannis can convert this one. He's looking for a K or a grounder. He'll take either one right now. Well, it's a fast track here at Bethpage, and not artificial turf, but the grass is really cut low, so harder ground balls. 2-2. Two -two. Inside, it hit him, and that'll bring in another run. Second hit batsman of the inning as Cohen comes in to score, and a 2-0 lead for Bethpage early on. And that's unfortunate. You know, after having the visit to the mound, he got the walk. It looked like Hadziana started to settle down. He was throwing some strikes. He was in the driver's seat there, but just an unfortunate pitch. And an opportunity for Joe Resta to help his cause. The pitcher for Beth Page stepping up to the plate. Resta had himself a day against the Red Devils. He went two for three with a double and a strikeout against Plain Edge in their 6-1 loss. And the senior with an opportunity to do damage. A wave and a miss at a fastball, nothing in one. Takes a big cut there again, like you said. Senior on this team and 
Not big in stature, but uses his size well. And he's got an opportunity, again, to build on his own cause. Yeah, he didn't get a lot of at-bats last year. Mostly came out of the pen. A one. Well, even a miss. Pulled a string with a changeup. Nothing in two. A little frustrated with himself there on that swing, but he looks like he's going for the fences on those two swings. And right now, just a little contact would be fine. Leonardo the runner at third, Luparello off of second, Will Lynn at first. Already two runs home for the home team. Beth Page looking to extend their lead and Resta calls time. Well, like we mentioned for every broadcast, but for newer viewers as well, uh, no pitch clock at the high school level and no uh, cap on timeouts called by the hitters or pickoff moves. So that's what we got dealing here today. And of course, only seven innings. Some old school baseball. Of 2019. 02. Waste pitch outside, one and two. Good job holding back there to make the count one and two. And John, even the major leagues rethinking that pitch count with all the injuries that have been going on. The pitch clock, rather. Yeah. Parts of the game I still miss. I think you should be able to throw over as often as you want. 1-2, swing and a miss. King size strikeout for Hadzianis. There's two away. And Resta looked like he was trying to send that one over the fence on every one of those swings, maybe getting a little too excited with those bases loaded. And that's going to put Max Diorazio in a spot now. Yeah, just a good job switching it up and gets the wave and a miss. You're right, had him in the bucket. Max Diorazio, the second baseman, steps up with the bases juiced. And takes a fastball on the outer edge for strike one. Nice pitch there, showing that fastball down low. And Diorazio in a nice position here. There are two outs. He's just got to get this ball in play. Diorazio battling with Liam Walters for that second base position. And, of course, Fisher says, if you're going to hit, we're going to have you in the lineup. And that's been the mandate for the rest of his squad as he's starting to sort out his team that is looking to get back to the playoffs. Went 17 games a year ago, and remember they won the county in 2021. It's a program that knows excellence. 1-1 one, one pitch in the dirt. Good stop by Madden. And Fisher ideally hoping that Dura that uh, they both hit. You know, that Walters can hit, Diorazio can hit, and he can have his pick and be able to bring him in off the bench. 2-1 count here, and we'll see if he's going to be swinging or taking. And time called at the plate. Godzian is looking like he started to settle in a little bit, you know, getting a little confidence maybe after Resta gave him those big swings and he was able to get the K. But he's got to keep that ball out of the dirt. Two balls, one strike. And another step off. And so there's some disconnect with the battery. Yeah, I don't think this is cat and mouse at this point in the game. So definitely a little confusion. Well, Anthony Sarapica says that the signs come in from the dugout, as most coaches will uh, call the game. Pickoff throw over to first. Let's see if they got him. Not in time. Good job by Will Lynn to get in just ahead of the tag. Yeah, Lynn's got that long, lanky body. Got that arm under there. And we'll take a look at it here. And, yeah, Lynn gets over there with ease. Interesting idea for a pickoff there. And on the ground to third. Should be an easy play for Rowan, who picks it up in time to get the runner, Luparello by a hair. Well, that was a lot closer than we thought it would be. It's a fielder's choice that ends the inning, and we'll go to the second on the Varsity Media Sports Network. You're watching the Varsity Media Sports Network, the home for New York high school sports. Dante does Terrific it again! defensive play, Dante Zadaro. Ilico ties it up. Move by Diego. steps up and scores. A jump shot for Nell.
Hey, sports fans, did you know Varsity Media live stream broadcasts get viewed by college coaches nationwide? Through our announcer's storytelling and insight on your athletes, we can help your players get an edge on college recruiting. Find out how by reaching out to Varsity Media today, 516-403-2050, or email ben at varsitymedia.net. Top of the second inning here at Bethpage, and it's the Golden Eagles with a 2-0 lead over Manhasset. He's Rob Anderson. I'm John Perez, and uh, an interesting way to end the bottom of the first inning with Max Durazio at the plate. Grounder to third, and a little trouble by Rowan, who bobbles it, but picks it up just ahead of the tag. Yeah, manages to hang on there, and thank goodness they didn't need any more fielding mistakes there in an inning where there were two batters walked in error, two hit by pitch. And, you know, credit to Hadzianis for finally settling down. Coach said he's got ice water in the veins. He did find it with that bottom, bottom of the batting order. But he's going to be seeing the top pretty soon into the next inning. And we went with eight hitters the there in that inning. In the second inning the right Only one number hit, number two across. So that'll bring up the cleanup hitter, Mike Diorio, to lead it off for the Indians. As Joe Resta faced the minimum in the first inning, although it was a pretty eventful Three batters as well. Got a ground out, a single, and then a scorcher over to the shortstop, A.J. Pavoff, who doubled up the catcher, Parker Madden, who was trying to steal second. And the umpire, Steve Gross, asking to have the... Uh, the rosin. That was the rosin bag? Yep. That's what he says, have it moved. Maybe interfering with his sight line with the ball. Could be as the 1-1 is pulled foul down the right field line. Diorio has some speed, has some power in that position. Worked on his hitting in the offseason quite a bit. Yeah, and he's someone that has really shortened his swing and approach at the plate and has a better eye as Resta misses with a curveball. Two-way player gets a start in right field today. 2-2, Two -two, lays off, and the count's full. And that's a tempting pitch to swing at so nice job holding up there to get the full count and they want to try to keep him on the mound a little bit give their pitcher time to reset payoff pitch just inside and it's a leadoff walk and you heard it in the crowd a little oof look close but gross sees it as a strike uh, a ball rather and we've got a runner on base diorio at first and that's going to bring up cartridge yeah mateo cartridge a junior one for three with an RBI against Herricks on Thursday. And a quick throw over. And Diorio, who's got good speed, slides in ahead of the tag. One other point of emphasis, and one of the new systems that was installed for Anthony Sarapica was the base running. And as the strikes poured in by Resta, and the count is nothing in one. And he said a big part of that was a lot of teaching and technical stuff in the beginning of the year. Um, so that way when they got onto the field, they could just play baseball. Way even a miss, blew a fastball by him and rest ahead, nothing in two. Big cut there by Karsic. So you're saying they were working on just... Working on base running, smart base running, but also how to take a lead, a secondary lead, and little things that can, you know, lead to a deep playoff run. In the air, out to shallow center, pop off the shortstop is there, makes the catch on the outfield grass, and there's one away. And Karsic swinging all the way there. They're the definitely going to want to try to get on the board here, started. down to nothing. But they also want to stay in that batter's box a little bit. Give this chance, give uh, this pitcher a chance to get a few pitch count up there. As another throw over to first base, he's got a nice pickoff move. Yeah, and that's always the difference of learning. The pickoff move from the right-hand side and trying to get there. Runner goes. Breaking ball sits high. Throw down to second. It's a good one, but not in time as Diorio slides in ahead of the tag. And it's a stolen base and a runner in scoring position for the Indians. And a really nice job there to get out of that crouch and send the ball right down the gut. Bounce slowed it up a little bit, but certainly a good throw as we get another look at it. And just the hop right onto the slide. It's a good stolen base there. So running now, runner now in scoring position. And a good hitter's count for Lucas Lirian. Lirian a junior. 
And a walk and came around to score against Herricks last week. Here's a 2-0. That sits on the outside corner and Resta gets the strike and now gets a meeting with his catcher, Joey Luparello. And Luparello, just a quick little conversation there. They take a look over at second base. And Lyrian, one of the hardworking guys on this team, really focused a lot on his defense. Just misses three and one. Maybe a little bit outside on that pitch. Well, and it was an achievement for Manhasset to get to the playoffs last year with such a young team. Uh, under 500 each of the last two years. Nine wins in 2022, seven last year. Runner goes. This one's popped straight up behind the plate and should reach the seats. And the count is three and two. Almost hit that bus. Yeah, it looked like it just went a little bit wide of it. But the runner going, and again, being aggressive on these bases, both teams. And that's where you're just going to have to manufacture runs as best as you can. And Manhasset, a team that would love to go station to station. 3-2, downstairs, ball four. Take that one also, though. With runners on first and second now. And an opportunity to try to get one across is First Luke Gorillo. And Gorillo, one of the players that we talked about earlier. He's a, a pitcher, but also plays first base and had some injuries last year, but he's back and in a prime spot to get his team on the board. Yeah, he's someone that Manhasset would have loved to have at 100% for run. He's heading to Washington College to play his college ball. Breaking ball, wave and a miss, nothing and two. Resta's got that ball working now, and that's what his coach said. If he gets that curve working, the off speed working, he's tough to hit. And you just saw two of them in a row. See what he comes with now. Stick with it. Fastball, swing and a miss. He got him, blew it right by him for his first strikeout of the afternoon. Really good pitch calling back there. Whether it's from the dugout or from behind the plate, a good selection. And that curveball's moving. And you can see how much it sets up the fastball as well, Rob. Yeah, throws the two curves and then that strike down a little bit low, swings over the top. First pitch in the dirt, both runners go. Luparello has no play. Diorio over to third, Lurian is up to second. And now a couple runners in scoring position for James Rowan. So we saw wild pitches playing a role in the last inning against Manhasset, and now we'll see if it benefits them. Two runners in scoring position here. 1-0 in the dirt. And a backhanded stop by Luparello, and that'll bring out Rob Fisher. Well, Rob Fisher in his 20th season, like we mentioned, could be a little bit of a transitional year for Beth Page. He's not calling it a rebuilding year, just uh, a reshaping year. 17 and 80 a year ago, 14 and 9 in 2022, and then of course in the 21 season winning a county title uh, despite only winning 11 games. Now, to throw the caveat on that, they won 11 and 3, and of course that was the first year post COVID. Right. Yeah, COVID affected both of these teams too. I know Manhasset had quite a run going on in that COVID year as well, and uh, they were stymied. They had an incredible pitching staff that year. But I like that. I like the idea of reshaping a team instead of rebuilding. You know, you've got some pieces, but they've just got to be moved around, and you got to figure it out, and that's what a good coach does. So here's James Rowan, already ahead in the count, 2-0. and And a fastball hit on the ground to third. Charging is Walters. He'll have to go to first as a run comes in. But either way, that is out number three. So no runs on the board. No runs on a hit, no errors, and one left on base. We go to the bottom of the second on the Varsity Media Sports Network. You're watching Varsity Media, the premier high school sports network in New York. High school sports fans, Varsity Media Pass is the exclusive live stream partner of Nassau County Playoffs. For semifinal and championship coverage of boys and girls lacrosse, softball, and baseball, head to varsitymediapass.com to order. Varsity Media is the home for New York high school sports.
Hey parents, how about a bobblehead for your athlete? Bobbleheads are one of the most preferred personalized gift items today, and it's so easy to order. All you need is a photo of your athlete, a model number from our extensive collection of bobbleheads, and the sculpting process begins. Two proofs are sent for your approval, and once it's approved, in a few weeks, your bobblehead is on the way. It's that simple. Order your bobblehead today by logging into varsitymediapass.com and click catalogs or call 516-403-2050. Joe Resto with a king size third out to get the ground out and keep it a 2-0 lead for Beth Page in the bottom of the second inning. 9-1-2 due up for Beth Page as Liam Walters will lead it off. He's Rob Anderson. I'm John Perez and a little bit of a chillier day for baseball at least, but probably the best day that we've had in the New York metropolitan area over the last couple of days, and the sun finally shining on the baseball season here on Long Island. As Tyler Hadzianis heads to the mound for his second inning of work and an adventure of a first inning. As he hit a couple of batters, two walks in there as well, two runs scored, and now we'll deal to the number nine hitter. And his fastball misses high and away for ball one. Yeah, in the last inning there for Resta, Beth Page, the two walks, but managing to handle it and get out of the inning. The walks and the hit by pitches hurt Manhasset in that first inning. And we'll see if he can get some control. One one count here, nice fastball there. We'll see if he shows those ice water in his veins, like his coach said. One one, in the air out to left. Michael Harrigan, his first opportunity. He dives and he makes the play. And we get a web jam fighting a little bit against that sun. We can see that he takes off, gets a fantastic That's jump, reading that ball off the bat. Page, the left fielder number three, Antonio Porcello. And some slick fielding out there. We'll get another look. And again, that ball laced the opposite way, and you can see a great jump on the ball, battling a little bit with the sun and the diving catch and a beauty out there for the first out of the game. First pitch high and tight to the leadoff hitter, Antonio Porcelli, who singled to right his first time up. Porcelli was caught stealing in the bottom of the first inning. That was when uh, Hadzianis picked him off. And there's a curveball up and in. And Hadzianis behind the count, two and one. Especially for a young pitcher too, Rob, when Harrington or any fielder makes a play like that, it can certainly motivate your pitcher. But now a 3-1 count to the leadoff hitter, Porcelli. Yeah, that is like usually a pretty good boost, a beautiful play out in left field. 3-1, and on the ground a third, couple of hops. Rowan's up with it, fires to first in time, two up, two down to begin the second. Nice throw there across the diamond for the second out. And again, the fielders doing what they've got to do out there to help Hadzianis, they'll take that. And, you know, another thing, John, so far, even though we've been through the order already, we're at the second hitter in the lineup in the second inning, only one hit so far for Manhasset. And that was Porcelli's hit in the first inning. First pitch served in the air out to right, giving Chase his DRO. He lines it up, makes the catch in a 1-2-3 inning for Tyler Hadzianis. Two innings in the books, 2 nothing Beth Page on the Varsity Media Sports Network. Are you a local business looking for new and creative ways to promote your company? Varsity Media offers affordable rates that can get your message across to a demographic of 18 to 54 years of age. Our follower base across social media is over 50,000 strong and our viewership numbers per game are in the thousands. Don't blow your advertising budget on old staples like TV and radio media. Reach out to Varsity Media to get the best bang for your buck. Varsity Media is offering a video folder that you can customize to meet your needs. A photo of your athlete can be elegantly placed in the front panel. Essential statistics with a biography can be printed on the inside panel, and videos can be downloaded and viewed on an LCD screen for as long as two hours. The attractive video folder can be placed on a coffee table and instantly becomes a conversation starter. Order your video folder today by logging into varsitymediapass.com and click catalogs or give us a call at 516-403-2050. 
Top of the third inning, 2 nothing Beth Page here at Beth Page High School. And of course, if you want us to broadcast one of your baseball games, contact Varsity Media today and have us produce a sports cast for your team, including announcers, graphics, instant replay, multiple camera angles, and a memory your team will enjoy for a lifetime. Give us a call, 516 403 2050, or email ben at varsitymedia.net. He's Rob Anderson. I'm John Perez. Manhasset trailing 2 nothing. It'll be their number nine hitter, Gavin Corfine, to lead it off for the Indians in the road half of the third. Nice job in that last inning defensively by the third baseman, James Rowan, and left fielder Michael Harrington to help them get out of that inning. Three up, three down. As Joe Resta fires a curveball high and away for ball one. And, you know, I think it's interesting, too, and in, Good on you to shout out the third baseman, James Rowan, who made an error on his first opportunity, but then has made two solid plays uh, in the following innings as well to keep it there. And so it looks like a hit by batter. Gavin Corfine is saying that he got hit on the front foot, and the home plate umpire, Steve Ross, then appealed over to John Craffa. Yeah, I think that the reason why it was appealed, we'll take a look. Yeah, it hit. It looked like, right? yeah, no, it hit him. It was just, did he go around on the swing? And he did not, so therefore you've got to hit batsman. And that's always the one troubling thing, too, and especially in high school sports, is you've only got two umpires. Your field umpire with nobody on base is at first base. So when Sky to shallow left, falling fast, and it dunks in for a base hit. Corfine... On his horse, he's headed to third, ahead of the throw, not in in time, he got him. Antonio Porcelli nabs Corfine at third. It's a base hit for Trey Zafiro, but Corfine is thrown out at third. We'll take another look. It's a laser beam from left field and a beauty of a tag. You can't ask for anything better there. I'll be honest with you, John, when that ball went off the bat and he made the turn at second, I thought he was gonna get in the third easily. But a fantastic third uh, throw there. And Zafiro, I guess, will get credited for a double on that one. So Zafiro with his first hit of the day, and that brings up Parker Madden, who single to right his first time up. Fastball on the outer half for strike one. So the Indians do keep somebody in scoring position. But now one out here as... Parker Madden settles in and tries to get one across the board here for the Indians. Curveball scoops outside, and we're even at one and one. Yeah, just missing on that curve there. And you see a little inconsistency from Reston with the curveball. Some of them just laying right in there, and then at times just kind of floating out of the zone. This one served out to right. Will Lynn lines it up. Plucks it out of the air for out number two. And Zafiro retreats back to second, and that'll bring up Tyler Hadzianis. I don't know if Zafiro read that one wrong off the bat, but it looked like he started to run. He didn't get back to the bag quick enough to tag. But started to run, and then kind of just jogged it back in there, and they'll hold him at second now as Tyler Hadzianis steps in. Hadzianis scalded the ball his first time up, lined out to the shortstop Popov, and then they were able to double up Madden. So technically 0 for 1, and now behind in the count, no balls and a strike. Like you said, John, he hit that ball real hard, just caught Madden running in the play, and it was an easy double, but... No one in the dirt, gets past Luparello, and that'll allow Zafiro to go to third without a throw. That's the first wild pitch there for Resta. So have a fourth runner in scoring position for Manhattan. They haven't been able to push through. Fastball, a tad outside. And the count is two and one. Yeah, that one just missing the plate there, and it's a two-one count. Hazianis looking to put one in the bank for his own cause. Infield plays straight up, and the 2-1. Lined up the middle, and that's through for a base hit. Emin Hassett's on the board. Zafiro comes in to score as Tyler Hadzianis parks it at first with an RBI single. 
Second hit of the inning, and Hazianis barreled that one up and saw it all the way, taking that fastball right up the middle. Nobody there. And the Indians get their first on the board, second hit of the inning. Take another look at it here. And just perfectly placed right up the middle. An easy scoring play there for Zafiro. As they take the throw over to first base. And Hazianis dives back in safely. Roman Hassett able to break through against Joe Resta, and now here's Mike DiOrio. He walked in, was stranded at third his first time up as he pops it up left side of the infield. Liam Walters is there, the third baseman, hauls it in, and the inning is over. Butman Hassett breaks through a run on one hit. No errors in one left on base. 2-1 going to the bottom of the third on the Varsity Media Sports Network. You're watching the Varsity Media Sports Network. The home for New York high school sports. Varsity Media offers live streaming services for any sport. With human beings behind the camera, you can expect the proper coverage angles during each game. We offer customizable options such as live scoreboard, multiple cameras, instant replay, graphics, and even announcers. Find out how you can save $100 off a live stream package with Varsity Media by calling 516-403-2050 or email ben at varsitymedia.com. Did you just have the best athletic year of your life and now you want to show it off to college coaches? Well, let Varsity Media help you. Varsity Media's college recruiting videos show off your unique skills to help you land a spot on the team of your dream school. We'll provide music, spot shadow effects, and a link to send to your next coach. Contact us today for more information. Don't rely on word of mouth or cold emails. Let Varsity Media help you take your game to the next level. Home half of the third inning as Tyler Hadzianis begins his third inning of work. As Hadzianis put his team on the board with an RBI single. It's 2-1 Beth Page as Hadzianis. A lot of baseball potential and, of course, comes from an athletic family as well. His mother, Lori, played softball for St. Francis Prep in the early 90s. And, of course, you can see Tyler getting it from his mother as well. Uh, a good repertoire on the mound and hoping to be uh, the best pitcher in his family and surpass Lori as well. That's always a big goal for the, the student to pass the teacher, right? Mom is superstar on the mound. And honestly, if Tyler could put together an inning like the last one, he's on his way. Rough first inning, settled in in the second, got some really nice defensive plays behind him. But his pitch selection so far so good. He's just got to get it over, and I don't think he bounced any in that second inning. So that's, that's big. No, one, two, three, second inning as the first pitch to Ziggy Cohen is lined back to the screen, nothing in one. Yeah, that fastball offering, really just taking it to him there. And Ziggy fouls it back. Ziggy hit by a pitch in his first at bat. Wound up scoring later on. One of two hits batsmen by Hadzianis. And the curveball stays high, count even at one and one. Also made it to third on a wild pitch in that inning, so he got himself in scoring position on a couple of pitching gaffs. One, one. That's scorched foul down the left field line. And Hadzianis ahead in the count. One and two. And, you know, we see it here, and I know it's off screen, but one of the better athletic facilities in all of Long Island is Beth Page High School. They're able to have a baseball, softball, and, of course, the multipurpose soccer, football, lacrosse field, all in the same vicinity. This so one popped up, foul territory right side. Let's see who's got it. It's the first baseman, Gorillo, calling off the catcher, Madden. for out number one. Yeah, really nice facility, like you said, John, and that all-purpose field right behind us. That's where that foul ball went, a little baseball on the cross field. But definitely a beautiful facility here, a nice-looking scoreboard. And there you see the lacrosse team. We just had them on the Varsity Media Sports Network last week. A big win over Lindbrook, of course, in that rainy day. And the first pitch to Vito Leonardo hits the outside corner, and Hadzianis pumps in strike one. It's now six in a row retired by the Indians' right-hander. Starting to find himself in a groove. And the count even had a ball and a strike. Yeah, you can see he's definitely got a little more moxie now, even throwing that high heat. 1-1 one, one coming. Pops foul out of play over the Beth Page dugout.
Yeah, it looks like he's picking up a little more velocity on those pitches too. Beth Page swinging a little late on him. Well, that's Giannis. Sits between 80 and 82 miles per hour on his fastball, and that's only going to raise uh, as he gets older and stronger. But he blows a fastball by Leonardo as he picks up his second strikeout of the day. And two outs to begin the third inning. And he's definitely picking up that velocity and feeling more confident after that. High heaters, two nice strikes, and we'll see that strikeout right now. Beautiful heater up in the zone and a swing and a miss. Joey Luparello attacks the first pitch and skies it out to center field. Gavin Corfine in stride, loses the cap, but makes the catch. And another 1-2-3 inning for Tyler Hadzianis. Three in the books, 2-1 Beth Page on the Varsity Media Sports Network. You're watching the Varsity Media Sports Network. The home for New York high school sports. Dante does Terrific it again. Defensive play. Dante Madaro. Kill it go. Ties it up. Move by Diego. Steps up and scores. A jump shot for Nell. Hey, sports fans. Did you know Varsity Media live stream broadcasts get viewed by college coaches nationwide? Through our announcer's storytelling and insight on your athletes, we can help your players get an edge on college recruiting. Find out how by reaching out to Varsity Media today. 516-403-2050 or email Ben at varsitymedia.net. 2-1 lead for Beth Page in the top of the fourth inning. He's Rob Anderson. I'm John Perez. And Joe Resta back on the mound to face 5-6-7 due up in the Beth Page order. And a little bit of a chilly, brisk day here at Beth Page High School and a good Conference 3 matchup. Of course, we mentioned at the beginning of the broadcast the implications that these Two played last year later in the season. Manhasset getting a much-needed victory uh, in the final game of that series to clinch a playoff spot. And Manhasset in year one under Anthony Sarapica uh, reaching the playoffs, which is a good achievement, and now it's to take the next step forward, Rob. And they look like they're definitely in a position to do that this year. A lot of talent, and again, we've seen throughout this game, they're using their speed, they're starting to settle in. They look like a team that's got some com composure here. And we'll see how Karsic does DH, and he uh, popped out to the third baseman in that first at bat. He's 0 for 1 today. Yeah, Karsic a hit in three at-bats in an RBI against Herricks last Thursday and looking to start it off against Joe Resta. And he watches a sweeper break away in the count even at 1 and 1. Yeah, Resta throwing a lot more off speed in the last two innings than he did in the first. 1-1. Fell right back to the screen. Got to go to rip it, a high curveball. As Resta now, with three plus innings, has given up four hits, allowed just a run. Two walks, and has not striking, struck an out, uh, has one strikeout. And ahead in the count, one, two. Breaking ball upstairs. Two balls and two strikes. So, really, the only one's doing a little damage off him so far as that top of the order. Zafiro, Madden, and Hazianis with the hits. And that's outside, and Karsic has worked the count full. Yeah, that one just a tad outside, and some of the fans behind is not too happy about it. Right back to the mound, backhanded by Resta. Has trouble getting it out of the glove, so he throws the glove over to first base for out number one. Shades of El Duque, Orlando Hernandez, as Karsic is retired for the first out. Well done. That's perfect, and if you take a look at it, the ground ball not hit too hard, but a nice stab there. And as Resta goes over to the bag, just struggling, struggling, says here, take the whole thing. You gotta love it. And Leonardo was like, okay, we'll, we'll do this. That's something that's done in PFPs, I'd imagine, right? <laughs> Absolutely. Lucas Larian watches outside for ball one. I, you kind of wonder what he's going to do. Like, you see him struggling there. He's right. sitting there, and he's, like, looking, and then finally. 
Lirian walked his first time up and then strikes it foul down the third baseline. Yeah, that one just foul, and Beth Blade still playing it like it's fair. You got to say one thing about playing up by Steve Gross, very consistent so far with that strike zone. So that's a good thing to see. Gives both of the pitchers an opportunity to know what they're dealing with. 1-1 one, one coming. Swing and a miss. Going back to that heat. That's been the thing about Resta. He's been able to change location and dial it up when needed. 1-2, curveball on the outside corner. Got him looking. Got him looking. Lyrian shaking his head, but that was a beautiful pitch right down the gut. And I think the off-speed just kind of buckled his knees a little bit. Wasn't sure that it was coming. But a really nice pick selection here. You see that curve just drop. Beautiful pitch there. First pitch fastball, chopped foul, third base side. And that's a tough one, especially when the fastball right before it was coming at the same sight line. And then just the bottom falls out. And a strikeout looking, second strikeout of the day. Gorillo, the other strikeout victim in the second inning. Swinging, right? He was swinging yep. on the... I think the other interesting thing too, Rob, is that Resta has been missing barrels. We haven't really seen anyone square one up with the exception of Trey Zaviro. And now ahead in the count, one and two. Yeah, Zaviro got a, a good hold of him, but yeah, absolutely, those balls are, and like you, you just made a point of saying, is that it's kind of inside the zone, outside the zone, he goes north, south, east, west. One, two. Fastball chopped on the ground, second base side. Max DeRazio is up with it, fires to first. And a 1-2-3 inning for Joe Resta. He's through four with a 2-1 lead on the Varsity Media Sports Network. You're watching Varsity Media, the premier high school sports network in New York. High school sports fans, Varsity Media Pass is the exclusive live stream partner of Nassau County Playoffs. For semifinal and championship coverage of boys and girls lacrosse, softball, and baseball, head to varsitymediapass.com to order. Varsity Media is the home for New York high school sports. Hey parents, how about a bobblehead for your athlete? Bobbleheads are one of the most preferred personalized gift items today, and it's so easy to order. All you need is a photo of your athlete, a model number from our extensive collection of bobbleheads, and the sculpting process begins. Two proofs are sent for your approval, and once it's approved, in a few weeks, your bobblehead is on the way. It's that simple. Order your bobblehead today by logging into varsitymediapass.com and click catalogs or call 516-403-2050. Back here at Beth Page High School, it's a 2-1 lead for the Golden Eagles over the Manhasset Indians, 2-1, as Will Lynn will lead it off against Tyler Hadzianis, who outside of giving up the two runs in the first inning has really settled in, Rob. He's now retired seven in a row. Yeah, absolutely, and retired those last six, three up, three down in uh, the last two innings, second and third, and you can see it. He just looks, the third inning, I think, I saw the change. You know, he got some help defensively in that second inning, in the third inning, you just see a change in his posture and his delivery. Feels very confident and also a great job with his partner there behind the plate, Mr. Parker Madden, doing a heck of a job. Yeah, they've done a solid job as they've allowed two runs through three innings on just one hit. Now, of course, there's a couple walks and a couple hit by batsmen, but like we mentioned, seven in a row sat down, and Will Lynn should lead it off for Beth Page as we wait for the AOK. -okay. You see Parker trotting out there quite a bit, talking to his pitcher, and that's that's big. You know, the relationship, I, you know, as a coach, softball coach, I've always tried to cultivate that, have the catcher really just get in the mind of your pitcher, especially when Hadzian has an inning like he did in that first inning. Just get out there, know how to talk to him, settle him down, and it's clearly happened. So here's Lynn, the sophomore, hit by a pitch in his first at-bat in the first inning. As Hadzianis dots the outside edge for strike one. Yeah, he's in his zone now, no doubt about it. Lynn, Joe Resta, and Max Durazio do up against Hadzianis. It was ahead of the count, nothing and two, and boy, does that breaking ball have some bite. It does. I mean, right there, you can see that Lynn just didn't know what to do with it. Started to pump the fist a little bit there, and then 
Out back. Fastball hit on the ground to short. Ranging to his right is Zafiro. Fires to first. Not in time as it skips past the glove of Gorillo. And that should see if that gives Lynn the extra base. The ground rules are so different here. And where we're set up, uh, past first base, that's out of play. So it is. So it'll be an E6. And then Lynn moves up to second. And Beth Page with a runner in scoring position. Nobody away to lead off the fourth inning. Yeah, essentially becomes a two base error there. And I actually just took a peek there. You can see there's a little dead zone over by the uh, pitcher's mound over there that they've got on the side. The bullpen of sorts. And now a runner in scoring position, it's Will Lynn. And that brings up Joe Resta, struck out in his first at bat. And Resta trying to be like Hadzianis and help his own cause. Shows bunt and pops it foul off to the right side. Nothing in one. And if we remember that first at bat, Resta was not resting. He was he was swinging for the, the, the hills every single time he was up there. Some big cuts. And now squaring off the bunt, moved the runner. I think that's smart in a game like this. Now that Hazianis looked like he's got his motor going, try to move the runner and set something up. Yeah, corners pinch in Gorillo, especially at first base. Showing bunt, fastball in the dirt, skips past Madden. That's going to let Lynn go to third. It's the second wild pitch of the game by Hadzianis, and now that third run 90 feet away. And John, we spoke about it in the first inning, and there was a wild pitch like almost right after I, I mentioned how they were hopping around at first base. Those runners rattled him. He looked back twice. Lynn was kind of leaning and jumping, and then boom, we got the wild pitch, you know? So now. No need to bunt unless you go for the squeeze, which I don't see happening. But that would be fun. Yeah, we'll see here what, what play they put on. The infield comes in with a runner on third and nobody out. A 2-1 lead for Beth Page as Resta waves and misses. And Hanzian is ahead of the count, one and two. Yeah, they're going to let him swing away. Kind of surprised they're playing as far in as they are, to be quite honest with you. Well, we're at that middle point of the game. Remember, only seven innings, and every run's so important. Here's the one-two. Cut on and missed. He got him. Man, he's got a, a nice swing, but every time he's looking to mash that thing. Second K swing in there for Resta. That's now three for Hadzianis. Yeah, look at that cut. He's swinging out of his shoes. Oh. So one hit in the air out to right. This should be deep enough to get the run in. Diario makes the catch. Runner tags. Here comes a throw to the plate. Offline, and the runner scores. Will Lynn slides in ahead of the tag on the sacrifice fly by Max Dorazio. Makes it 3-1. Beth Page at home. And that is a big run. And the throw was offline, but little mustard behind it. From our angle, it looked like there might have been a chance for the tag, but that bounce made it rough. We'll get a look here. Again, a little bit offline, and it was that bounce that kind of forced him to move backwards and get that run across. But it looked like it was going to be close from where we were sitting. So Beth Page gets the insurance run, and that brings up Liam Walters. Shows bunt and misses. Nothing in one. And John, another earned run. E6 there. Yep. Second error on the third baseman today. And both costly. Both times, runners cross the plate. And unfortunately, Rob, that's just what happens when you've got a young team. Yeah. Right? Both of these teams have, and you're going to go through those growing pains, especially at this juncture of the year. And also, like we said, especially when you saw a, a beautiful play by Rowan also. So contributed to help get out of that second inning on a beautiful play. So there are going to be some growing pains. The other thing that's tough about that era and that run is now you got Walters up. Next inning, you have to start with the top of the order again. 2-1 popped up. It's Rowan and Zafiro, and the shortstop Zafiro in foul ground makes the catch in stride. Or check that, he hit off the it, okay. Yeah, it hit off the base of the glove there, right off the palm. It looked good, and then it took a funky roll. Good run over there. I surprised the third baseman didn't yeah. handle it. So now two balls, two strikes, two outs. Already a run home for Beth Page. Here's the pitch upstairs, and the count's run full. Good job by Walters to lay off the high heat there. Full count, and I got to think Hadzianic's going to challenge him with a fastball. He does, and that misses outside, ball four. 
just missing on the outside corner. Hadzianis looking over at the dugout like, what am I supposed to do there? And we're gonna get now to the top of the order for Porcelli. Porcelli with the only hit so far for Beth Page, a single in the first inning. Yeah, and he grounded out in his second at bat. And Walter's now the runner at first. Throw over, that skips past Gorillo and goes out of play again. Well, either way, Walters was going to get second base as it squibbed past Gorillo. And Beth Page with another runner in scoring position and then a chance to add to their lead. And I guess that'll go in the books as a E1. And that gives, like you said, Porcelli a runner in scoring position here. And an opportunity to increase this lead. Three to one here in the fourth inning. Third error on the day. Foreman has it as a fastball zips high and away, 1-0. and Antonio Porcelli really seeing the ball well to begin the year. He's got a hit in all three games and a head in the count, 1-0. and Pitch high and upstairs and count 2-0. And in the second and third inning, when the fielders are doing what they got to do, Hadzianic does what he's got to do. Feels like when you get off to that, that tough start with an error, then you start seeing the wild pitches and the errant throws to first. So we'll see if he can get past Porcelli. Snap throw down to second base. That skips off the helmet of Walters in the shallow center. But Walters wasn't going to challenge the armor core fine. And now Hadzianis behind the count 3-0. and oh. I'll tell you, though, a heck of a throw there by Madden to get off the knees to get that ball up. You don't see too many Benito Santiago's throwing from their knee. No, not at all. Yachty Molina was great at that as well. Yeah, Yachty. Tony Pena, go back. Oh, he yeah, he started it all off. Started it off. <laughs> Comes a 3-1. And it dots the outside corner and a much needed strike for Hadzianis and the counts run full. Yeah, Porcelli tried to sell it as a ball, but he's gonna have to step back in there. An error, a strikeout, a sack fly, and a walk. And a run home for Beth Page, leading three to one and looking for more. And Antonio Porcelli calls time at the plate. John, when I was a kid, Tony Payne was one of the ones that, like, if I caught from my brother in the yard, I'd set up like any other one leg out all yep. the time. Comes a payoff pitch. Upstairs, ball four. Yeah, no doubt about that one. And the second walk of the inning, and that's going to put another base runner on. It'll be first and second now. And it's going to bring in Popov. Yeah, Popov reached on an error, stole second base, and then scored on the wild pitch. 0 for 2 on the day after he flew out to right his last time up. And a good shot there when he flew out to right. Popov, such a versatile infielder. Williams and misses at a first pitch fastball, nothing in one. Nice cut there on the fastball, just on top of it. Walters off of second, Porcelli off of first. A one. Curveball on the outside corner. And Hanziana's ahead, nothing in two. That was a really nice pitch choice there as it rolls pop off. Hanziana's <laughs> now just doing some quick checks with the runners, but you can see he's locked in on his catcher and trying to get this out. 0 2. Little wiggle room. 0-2, curveball just missed outside. He tried to catch Popoff chasing. And a good eye by AJ, and the count is one and two. Adzianis thought he had him there. Hopping around on the, the mound, just missing. But a, like you said, a great job of Popoff to lay off. Fastball popped up and foul out of play. And we'll do it again. So hanging in there, one and two. 
Run is on first and second. It's a 3-1 lead for the home team. Hadzi Giannis trying to get past Popoff and limit the damage. 1-2. And that's outside in the county, even at 2-2. Two two. Well, Rob Fisher says that Popoff's the best athlete he has on his team, and he puts the ball in play. Anything can happen. He wants him to hit the ball more on the ground this year because he's got that speed. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. A 3-1 lead for Beth Page. It's the pitch. And that's popped foul right side, and it'll go into the parking lot. And one hop off the bus. So that one hit the bus. So Popov doing a good job here battling. We saw that a little bit earlier in the game, running that pitch count up. It was Popov last time that fouled off about four. So doing a real good job working the count now here against Hadzianic in the fourth inning. Hadzianic ready with the 2-2. Two -two. Peter just misses outside and the count's full. And what a great at bat. Sorry, go ahead, John. No, no, it's, it's been a good at bat so far. It was behind in the count, nothing in two. That'll put Walters and Porcelli in motion. Already a run home in the fourth inning. Biggest pitch of the game for Hadzianis. Nobody warming up at the Manhasset bullpen. Here's the pitch. Lined into right center field. It's a base hit. Walters rounds third. He will score. It gets past Corfine. That's going to allow Porcelli to round third. He will score without a throw. It's a two RBI single for A.J. Popoff. And Beth Page has opened it up. They lead 5-1. And going to a full count was the killer there, John, because he got the runners in motion. That was going to definitely score at least one, and then when it got past the center fielder, an easy two with the runners getting a head start there. And Popov's on second. We'll take a look. He smashes it. And as it drops, it looks like it was just misplayed, just a bad jump on the ball, and it rolls all the way to the fence. And now there'll be a meeting at the mound. Two runs across here in the fourth inning. It is five to one in favor of Beth Page, John, and I gotta think right now, it's uh, just trying to settle your pitcher down and maybe an opportunity, like you said, to get somebody warming up in the bullpen, and it looks like that's what's gonna happen. Yeah, and you see it gets past Gavin Corfine. It's the third error of the inning. So technically an RBI single for Popoff. He goes to second on the error, and now, Hadzianis just trying to keep this a 5-1 game and not being helped out by his defense as that will start to get the bullpen stirring. And Ziggy Cohen stepping up to the plate and an opportunity for Beth Page to do some damage with the runner on second. And two down in the bottom of the fourth inning. And I got that, got to think that that meeting in part was to give the bullpen a little opportunity to warm up in case they need him for this inning. You know, and, and you got a feel now for Hadze Giannis. He had, a, he had a tough first inning, didn't get a lot of help from his field in the first inning. Got that pitch count up, and then two really efficient innings, three up, three down. And Madden. the dirt skips off of Madden, and that's going to let Popoff go to third. Again, two efficient innings there, got the strikeout. This inning, the error, but then came back with a strikeout, got the second out. And then it was a real nice at bat there by uh, Walters. He walks, Porcelli, and then Popov with a fantastic at bat. Good hitters count to Cohen, 2-0. That hits the inside corner, strike one. It's a good pitch, Cohen definitely crowded the plate a little bit there. Yeah, yeah. Cohen's right over the plate. And he's got a quick swing too, really barrels up the ball. And he does so there, hits it on the ground to short. Fielded by Zafiro, fires to first, and that pulls the first baseman Gorillo off the bag. It skips off his glove, goes out of play. A run comes in to score. Ziggy Cohen with an RBI, and he'll end up at second. It's 6-1 Beth Page. And that'll go down in the books as an E5 as it rolls into the dead zone. And that's a free second base. And take a look there, the grounder to the shortstop. And that ball... Yeah, offline there. And just like that, there's a runner at second base. Vito Leonardo takes down and in. And the count is 1-0. Oh. 
And so Hadzianis is getting the ground balls. It's just, unfortunately, uh, his team can't help him out there as Leonardo walking a strikeout in two plate appearances. And another runner in scoring position. That's Cohen at second. Here's the pitch. Check swing. He goes around. Count one and one. Snap throw down to second, and Cohen gets in ahead of the tag. Yeah, Hadzianis had a few opportunities, set up a few opportunities for his team to get him out of this, and instead he's facing the eighth batter of the inning, starting to mirror that first inning where he also faced eight. But again, he's not, you know, he walked one bat, two batters this inning, but for the most part found a little bit more control, just not getting the help behind him. 1-1 one, one coming in the dirt, stopped by Madden, no advancing by Cohen, and the count two and one. And so that'll allow Madden to go out to the mound and talk to his pitcher and, you know, kind of just settling him down and, you know, not sure what the words would be, uh, Rob, uh, right now for Madden other than just, hey, Let's just get the batter out. Yeah, I think it's throw strikes. I think that's what you say at this point. Throw strikes. You know, hope that the guys behind you can do what they got to do. Leonardo does have pop. You struck him out last time. If you got that memory, go back to what you did. There's Peter Scala warming up in the Manhasset bullpen. We'll see how much longer Hadzianis has. Here's a 2-1, down and in. And the count 3-1. and one. And that visit also might just give the bullpen a little bit more time. The way things are going, this might be Hadzianis' last batter. If he can't get through, we'll see. Three balls, one strike, two outs. 6-1, Beth Page. It's the pitch in the dirt, ball four. It's a fifth walk by Hadzianis. We're going to put runners on first and second. For Joey Luparello, the ninth batter, to step up to the plate. And while it might have been his fifth walk, what was most notable about that walk, John, is that three of those pitches were in the dirt. And that'll be all for Hadzianis as Anthony Sarapika comes out to the mound, and we'll get a new pitcher as well. Peter Scala coming on for Manhasset in the fourth inning on the Varsity Media Sports Network. Dante does Terrific it again. Defensive play. Dante Lodaro. Yellico ties it up. Move by Yeso steps up and scores. The jump shot for Nell. Are you a local business looking for new and creative ways to promote your company? Varsity Media offers affordable rates that can get your message across to a demographic of 18 to 54 years of age. Our follower base across social media is over 50,000 strong and our viewership numbers per game are in the thousands. Don't blow your advertising budget on old staples like TV and radio media. Reach out to Varsity Media to get the best bang for your buck. High school sports fans, Varsity Media Pass is the exclusive live stream partner of Nassau County Playoffs. For semifinal and championship coverage of boys and girls lacrosse, softball, and baseball, head to varsitymediapass.com to order. Varsity Media is the home for New York high school sports. Varsity Media offers live streaming services for any sport. With human beings behind the camera, you can expect the proper coverage angles during each game. We offer customizable options such as live scoreboard, multiple cameras, instant replay, graphics, and even announcers. Find out how you can save $100 off a live stream package with Varsity Media by calling 516-403-2050 or email Ben at Varsity Media. Peter Scala, the new pitcher for Manhasset as Beth Page leads it 6-1 to one here in the home half of the fourth inning. Already three runs on the board in this frame. Four runs, excuse me, on the board in this frame. And that'll bring up Joey Luparello 
with runners on first and second and two down. The ninth batter to step up to the plate. And the first pitch from Scala in the dirt bounces off of Steve Gross and no advancement by either runner. They count 1-0 and, oh and Gross is, he might need an ice bath after this game. <laughs> He's done a great job though back behind the plate. And also was quick to tell us about the changes. Walked right over here. Like, Helping us do our job. So thank you, Steve Gross. Fastball below the knees, and the count 2 0 to Joey Luparello. 0 for 1 with a walk and a fly out, and two plate appearances. And as Peter Scala trying to just keep this a 6 1 game. Definitely enough cushion for Joe Resta and the rest of Beth Page. 2 0 sits inside, 3 0. Well done. So that eclipse didn't uh, affect your brain at all. No. That was good. Scala, good athlete. Normally the courtesy runner, but uh, there's so many players on this Manhasset team that can both pitch and hit, and Scala getting the first assignment out of the bullpen. 3-0. This one chopped. First base side in fair territory. And Luke Carrillo picks it up and steps on the bag, and the inning is over. Beth Page puts four runs on the board. They lead it 6-1, to one, four innings complete. We go to the fifth on the Varsity Media Sports Network. You're watching the Varsity Media Sports Network, the home for New York high school sports. Varsity Media offers live streaming services for any sport. With human beings behind the camera, you can expect the proper coverage angles during each game. We offer customizable options such as live scoreboard, multiple cameras, instant replay, graphics, and even announcers. Find out how you can save $100 off a live stream package with Varsity Media by calling 516-403-2050 or email ben at varsitymedia.com. Did you just have the best athletic year of your life? And now you want to show it off to college coaches? Well, let Varsity Media help you. Varsity Media's college recruiting videos show off your unique skills to help you land a spot on the team of your dream school. We'll provide music, spot shadow effects, and a link to send to your next coach. Contact us today for more information. Don't rely on word of mouth or cold emails. Let Varsity Media help you take your game to the next level fan of the game. Top of the fifth inning, a 6-1 lead for Beth Page as they've been getting it all done in all facets of the game. It's time for our Speed Island Speedy Play of the game and A.J. Popoff showing off the wheels earlier in this one. And we'll take a look at Popoff on the base paths. As Popoff with a good lead off of first and then is able to dive in ahead of the tag as Popoff picks up his first stolen base of the season. Speed Island, book your session today with Onyx Salva and the gang located in Garden City. And book a session at speedislandny.com. So AJ Popoff over at second base, and Rob looks like we have some substitutions here. Yeah, and right now, let's take a look here. Yeah, so that's what it is, and we appreciate Steve Gross behind the play. We'll get a pinch hitter for Manhasset, as it'll be number six, Jack Camara. And Camara will lead it off against Joe Resta. Yeah, good jab there by the umpire to get us filled in there, so we will have the pinch hitter. And so Jack Camara comes in for James Rowan, the third baseman. As Joe Resta fires a fastball in the dirt, 1-0. Oh. Well, Resta had about a 20-minute respite in the dugout, so we'll see if there's any rust there. A couple of shakeoffs. As Camara takes upstairs, 2-0. Oh. Yeah, we have had a big temperature dip since the last inning, so hopefully was able to stay warm there, maybe throw it on the side a little bit to keep them going. Nobody up in their bullpen. They'll try to get rested through this entire game. 2-1, skied foul and out of play into the parking lot off to the right side. Joe Resto run on four hits through four plus innings of work. 
as he is walked two, hit one batter, and struck out a pair as well against Manhasset. And Beth Page looking for its first league win of the year. And that's a called strike three. Got him looking on the outside corner. Third punch out for Resta, and there's one away in the road half of the fifth. So showing no signs of cooling down. And we'll take a look at it here. And another beautiful curve ball. It's the second time he caught somebody looking. It was Lirian last time on the curve. Now batting number 15. And like you said, that's his third strikeout of the game. Two uh, looking. And, and you know what he did right there? Double knot. Oh, did he? Right there. Hey. With the bunny. Are you a bunny ears or a loop shoot pull guy? I'm a loop shoot. You? You're showing your age there. <laughs> bunny ears all the way. When was the bunny ear popular? That happened like what, the 90s? Yeah, that's well, that's right around my, my time. There you go. I was in college in the 90s. Did you ever have the Velcro shoes? Yes, of course, and the Velcro wallet. And they lit up? The shoes and <laughs> no. the wallet. <laughs> oh, no, the shoes didn't lie. I don't think they had that technology in the mm. 1970s. <laughs> Gavin Corfine behind the count, one, two. Curveball, wave and a miss. As Luparello comes out, has to complete the strikeout, but overthrows his first baseman. And that's going to allow Corfine to go to second. Well, not exactly the way you dream up of reaching base, but Manhasset will take it. They've got a runner in scoring position and one out. Yeah, getting the strikeout and then uh, the tough throw down there. And that'll be an E on the catcher. And there'll be a runner on second. So far, Rested doing a good job getting himself out of those types of jams. Obviously showing the strikeout ability. Wouldn't mind one now. And we'll see how Corfine handles the running over at second base. It's the first error against the Bethpage defense. As this is lined over the glove of Popoff and in a left center field for a base hit. Corfine hesitated as he had to see it go through. Throw comes all the way home. That allows Trey Zafiro to go to second. And now Minhasset has something cooking with runners on second and third and one out for Parker Madden. Yeah, a couple little mishaps there. Missing the cutoff. First of all, that was just out of the reach of Popoff. I mean, that was a good hit, good leap. And we'll take a look at it just over his head. But then that throw, missing the cutoff, man, allowed Zafiro just to cruise into second where at first you're like, what's he doing? But wisely got into second base, missing the cutoff. And now you've got runners at second and third base. So that era might come back to haunt them with Corfine at third and Zafiro at first. Zafiro's second hit of the game, too, by the way. Yeah, he's been as good as advertised, too, as Zafiro is leading, uh, leading the way for Manhasset early on. Uh, in the season as Manhasset one and one on the year. Beth Page looking for their first win. They dropped their first two games of the season. And um, Rob, the benefit of a five run lead is that Joe Resta can pitch the contact. Yeah, let his defense do their job and try to get the outs. However, again, he does have that strikeout ability and that curveball has been working for him. When he drops that thing in, he's been freezing the batters. So we'll see if he relies on that moving forward. Parker Madden, a single and a fly out in two at bats against Resta as that skips over the glove of Luparella and nobody advances. And after all that, it's ball one. As we mentioned Resta, he lives and dies with his curveball and spiking it there. Corfine being real hesitant over at third base. He was held up and then on that wild pitch, didn't even really take much of a step. Fastball up and away. It's only one out, probably smart to be a little conservative on those bases, but run on contact unless it's up in the air. There's a much needed strike for Resta, two and one, and might be the end of the line for Resta. Some action warming up in the Beth Page bullpen. Sprayed foul off to the right side. And two balls and two strikes. Yeah, it looks like you got Charlie Ferrante over there in the bullpen and Mike Mackeltz. Two righties over there warming up. 2-2 two -two curveball sweeps outside and the count is full. Well, you'd have to imagine for Rob Fisher, he'd love for Resta to get the out here and maybe you take your chances, let him try and complete the fifth inning and then turn it over to your bullpen. 3-2. 
just inside, ball four, and the bases are loaded. Yeah, Resta showing a little look of shock on his face with that one. He thought he had it. Bases are loaded. And that'll bring up Tyler Hatsianis. And so Hatsianis responsible for the lone Manhasset run with an RBI single in the third inning. A chance to do more damage as he takes the first pitch curveball low and away for ball one. Hatsianis has hit it hard both times at the plate. Thought he had a hit his first at bat, but a nice play by A.J. Popoff to catch the screaming line drive. And out of that bullpen over there, it's uh, number 23, Mike Mackles. It just walked over to his coach. Looks like he's ready for the go if they don't get out of this one. Well, the tying run on deck is Mike DiOrio. Pitch, wave and a miss. Resta, a little extra mustard on that heater. And count two and one. And that was a big swing there. Two, one. Hit down the right field line, tailing foul. And only 270 down that right field line. Of course, it's hard for a right-handed hitter to get it over the big right field wall that you see that uh, kind of protects the softball field and connects to left field on the softball field. Here's a 2-2 pitch. Curveball dips outside, and the count is full. Well, Resta not afraid to throw his curveball in any count. We'll see if he goes that way with the bases loaded and a full count upcoming. Fastball, skied in the air, right center field, giving chases Lynn and Kalori, and it's Will Lynn that makes the catch. Tagging at third and heading home is Corfine. The throw's cut off. It's a sacrifice fly for Tyler Hadzianis, and that makes it 6-2, to two, Beth Page. And yeah, definitely a needed knock there and played perfectly by the Beth Page defense to get that ball in and limit the damage to one. And at this point, John, I think it's something you look for. Just play the, play the ball cleanly. Don't make any mistakes out there. And that's what they did. So Hadzianis getting the job done, getting one across. Trey Zafiro, good base running, ends up at third. And now Manhasset with runners on the corners for Mike DiOrio. That one skips inside, pops out of the glove of Luparello, but no advancement. One and oh. Diorio will walk and a pop out. Also stole a base. And a short lead off of first by Matt in the catcher. One oh. Served in the air, deep right field, giving Chase Lynn back track wall. And it one hops the wall. One run is in. Rounding third and heading home is Madden. Throw goes all the way to second. It's a two RBI double for Mike DiOrio. He just missed a home run, but that makes it six to four. Yeah, John, off the bat, I thought that one had wings. It looked like it was gonna go yard. Fall short, took that weak bounce, but it's good enough for two bags, and we'll take another look at it. Look at that cut, gets under it, and that ball is laced deep. He knows, but look at that. Oh, that's got to be a killer right there. Slowing up at first base, assuming the home run, going into your MLB trot, and actually making it a little bit of a play at second. I don't know that he would have got to third, but slowing down over at uh, first base certainly didn't help the idea that he could have. But regardless, yeah. two RBI. And we'll get a new pitcher now for Beth Page. And we'll take a break and introduce him when we come back on the Varsity Media Sports Network. Dante does it again. Defensive play. Dante Pizarro. Kiliko ties it up. By Diego steps up and scores. The jump shot for Nell.
Are you a local business looking for new and creative ways to promote your company? Varsity Media offers affordable rates that can get your message across to a demographic of 18 to 54 years of age. Our follower base across social media is over 50,000 strong, and our viewership numbers per game are in the thousands. Don't blow your advertising budget on old staples like TV and radio media. Reach out to Varsity Media to get the best bang for your buck. High school sports fans, Varsity Media Pass is the exclusive live stream partner of Nassau County Playoffs. For semifinal and championship coverage of boys and girls lacrosse, softball, and baseball, head to VarsityMediaPass.com to order. Varsity Media is the home for New York high school sports. Mike Mackholz finds himself in a hot spot with the tying run at the plate as Mackholz We'll look to stop this Manhasset rally. Already three runs home in the inning. And a 6-4 lead for Beth Page and Rob for Mackholtz. Uh, now just a two-run lead has to come out firing strikes. Yeah, Mackholtz now in. And you can see he's a lean righty out there. He does have to get the ball to the plate. He earns a runner in scoring position over at second. Two outs on the board, though, so hopefully he's got some juice in the tank here to get them through this and move it on. And it's Mateo Karcic, who's 0 for 2 on the day, stepping up to the dish. He represents a tying run, Mike Diorio over at second base. And the first pitch is a fastball outside for ball one. Joe Resta started off the contest when four and two thirds of an inning, gave up four runs on six hits, three walks and three strikeouts. He's responsible for Diorio, who's running on the pitch, throw down to third, not in time. It's a stolen base for Diorio. His second of the day, and that moves him closer, 90 feet away from being that fifth Manhasset run. Yeah, it looked like he got a good jump there, and they certainly were not thinking steal. Line foul off to the right side, and the count one and two. Yeah, getting a little piece of that and knocking it back was Karsic. Again, like you said, 0 for 2 on the day. He popped out and grounded out in the fourth inning. 1-2 coming. That's upstairs and the count even at 2-2. Two two. So Mackel showing a little heat there, throwing a few fastballs and getting him over. That one high, a nice high strike. Yeah, if it's been a lot of breaking pitches for Resta, uh, Mackholtz has dialed it up. As that fastball rolled on the ground to short, Popoff is up with it, slings it across to first, and the inning is over. Mike Mackholtz comes on and puts out the fire. And we go to the bottom of the fifth inning, a 6-4 lead for Beth Page on the Varsity Media Sports Network. You're watching the Varsity Media Sports Network, the home for New York high school sports. Dante does it again. Defensive play. Dante Zadaro. Kiliko ties it up. By Diaso steps up and scores. A jump shot, Fennell! Hey sports fans, did you know Varsity Media live stream broadcasts get viewed by college coaches nationwide? Through our announcer storytelling and insight on your athletes, we can help your players get an edge on college recruiting. Find out how by reaching out to Varsity Media today, 516-403-2050 or email ben at varsitymedia.net. Well, after the eclipse, now the cloud cover here at Beth Page High School as it's starting to get a little bit darker here in an early spring day. Beth Page with now a 6-4 lead, and Peter Scala right beginning his second in inning of work. This will be his first clean win. inning. He came on in relief and got Joey Luparella to ground out to first base to end the home half of the fourth inning. Well, Beth Page opened it up. They led six to one, and then Manhasset stormed back with three runs of their own. As Peter Scala will face six, seven, eight, due up in the Golden Eagles lineup. 
Hanzo, number 26, coming in for number three. 26 for three, and two for 11. Two's first name is Alex. Hold on, boys. So as I said, John, both teams now in their bullpen. It'll be Scala pitching here for the Indians. It was Mack Holtz in there for the Golden Eagles. And so this will bring up Will Lynn. He reached on an error and came around to score. And the first pitch is in the dirt for ball one. And it's Will Lynn who led off last inning as we saw nine batters. So he gets to be the leadoff in the fourth and the fifth. Lynn showing some speed on the bases also. Made a nifty play in the outfield today. And he laces one. And Corfine on the run. He'll have to play it on a hop as it skips past him again, but no advancement as Will Lynn picks up his first hit of the game. A leadoff single to begin the fifth. And a nice hit there just in that perfect spot between the outfield and infield. Took a slight turnover at second, but they got a runner. And Lynn has showed some speed on the bases in the field as well. And so Mike Mackholz, who came on for Joe Resta, he'll hit his first at bat of the day. And a throw over to first, and diving back safely is Will Lynn. And it looks like they're gonna let Mack Holt swing. He looked down, hasn't squared off the bunch or move a runner. Well, and that's what the pickoff throws are for. To see if they could get Mack Holtz to bite. There is the bunt, pops it up and just goes foul into the netting. Four strike one. All right, so it looks like Beth Page is just gonna try to move that runner over, get something on the scoreboard. Again, up six to four, leading six to one, coming into the last inning. Good lead there by Lynn at first. Another throw over, Lynn has some speed over at first, and we'll see if they put him in motion and quick toss aside. And Either way, good backup by the third baseman, James Rowan. Peter Scarrell looking for the double play. See if they keep the bunt on. They don't, and that's hammered foul, third base side. And in the count, nothing in two. So now Mack Oates is definitely gonna be looking to protect that plate and swing here. Lynn's lead fairly conservative now after the two throwovers. We'll see if they send Lynn. Mack Oltz can swing it. Behind in the count, nothing in two. And Scala, another check in of Lynn at first. Yeah, they're very concerned with him over there. He did break for a steal that was a foul ball earlier and got over on a wild pitch. So he does have shown a propensity to run. Curveball, just missed. Like Mackholz thought it was a strike. He started to turn around. So he'll take that. One and two count here. Scala with a peak. Comes home. Curveball again on the outside corner. Got him. First strikeout for Scala, and there's one away in the fifth. Yeah, really nice pitch there. Got him looking. Now batting and second baseman, number seven. Max Third strikeout out of that position. Look at that ball. Bottom fell out right down the middle and caught Mack Holtz looking. New second baseman for Manhasset is Matt Desconza. He comes on. As this one's hit on the ground at first. Off the glove of Gorillo. His only play is to first, and they get Max Dorazio for the second out as Will Lynn scampers over to second. So a productive out for Durazio, and that'll bring up Liam Walters. Liam Walters. And you saw Gorilla like take a look up at second. I think he was throwing the ball in his head before he got it in his glove. And then just took the safety play and got the out at first. Definitely was thinking about turning two there. Here's Liam Walters. 
A walk and a fly out in two plate appearances. An insurance run at second. Peter misses high for ball one. Scala doing a real nice job since he's entered the game. He did induce that ground out to get out of a pretty chaotic inning in the fourth. 1 0. Brave and a miss. Went up the elevator shaft. Count even at 1 and 1. And that's kind of one of the things so far that you've seen out of Scally. He's done a good job elevating that fastball. Scally with a low set. Curveball drops in for a strike, and he's got that working here in the home half of the fifth round. Yeah, he's in complete control right now, doing a great job coming out of the bullpen. Again, can't say enough, he came into a really tough spot in the last inning. And then his Indians get three on the board for him. Here's a one-two. Sky foul off the netting. And we'll do it again. Well, after Minhasset was able to put three runs on the board and cut the lead down to two, it's important for Scala to keep it that way. But Beth Page looking for insurance and Liam Walters looking to keep the line moving. Here's the one-two. Curveball in the dirt, smothered by Madden. Count stays at two and two. Hat flying off on that pitch there. Falling off the mound, looking like Mitch Williams back in the old days. I don't know if you remember him. He used to pitch and fall off the mound every time. His hat flying everywhere. Two balls, two strikes, two outs, the pitch. Fastball driven down the right field line and hooking foul. And a real good rip. And had a fastball and just a tad ahead of it for a long strike, number two. Yeah, got all the barrel on that one, but out in front, that thing hooked. And it looks like there's a little more action again in that Manhattan bullpen. So Scala probably getting this one inning here. We're gonna try to keep this a two-run game. The pitch, curveball, nubber. Second base, Descanza, first opportunity, and he skips and throws it away. Out of play, another run scores. It's another error by Manhasset, their fifth of the game, and Beth Page goes up 7-4. And that's a tough one. I mean, I understand why you don't want to put it in your pocket, but you got that it took a weird hop. It was a little squibber. You want to make the play, but that's the last thing in the world Manhasset can afford is another error there. A tough, again, if you're an athlete on the field, you're not thinking, oh, I'm just going to hold on to this thing, but that was probably the wise move. Here's Antonio Porcelli. Walked and came around to score his last time up. Beth Page with two runs in the first, four in the fourth, and now an additional run in the fifth. Leading 7-4 at home as Porcelli looking for his second hit of the day. He's one for two. Wave well, and a miss. And the count, nothing and one. So that ball thrown into that dead zone a few times today. And folks, as soon as it passes the first baseman and winds up over there, it's an automatic jog down to the other base. And Beth Page has taken advantage of it four times today. Check that, it was an 0-2 count, but either way, goes over to short and through the glove of Zafiro into left field. Rounding third, heading home is Walters. He'll score without a throw. Beth Page has put two runs on the board and they lead it eight to four. And I think that'll go in the book as an E6. As Walters crosses the plate. And again, the mishaps in the field just haunting this Indians team. And just like we had said about Hadzianis, you got to feel for Scala. He's making the pitches. He's getting the ground balls. And plays aren't being made behind him. No, 100%. As A.J. Popoff steps up to the plate, already two runs scored today. And a throw over to first as Porcelli dies back safely. So I think it's a pretty safe bet to say that this will be Scala's last inning before they go to the bullpen again, trying to get the fourth out. Runner goes, curveball in the dirt. No throw as Porcelli picks up his first stolen base of the day. So Porcelli's been on the bases three times today, a hit, a walk, 
And then on with that error, grounded out. Second at bat. Check swing, did he go around? And no appeal either way. And the count two and oh. So he likes being on those base pass, and he's got some speed too, the leadoff hitter. And he's gonna be a big part of this Beth Page lineup, and especially if he can set the table and get on base, it just does wonders for your team. And Beth Page, a team that's trying to find itself in its identity. Well, if Porcelli can be that leadoff hitter for them, you've at least got one area checked off. Yeah, and he's been on base three times today. The pop-off doing a pretty good job behind him. He's been on base twice. Fastball strike, throw down to second, skips off the heel of Porcelli, and he'll go to third. So the third error of the inning. And the second on the catcher, trying to do that exact same play, trying to do the pickoff from behind the dish, and another tough throw. 3-1, swing and a miss, and the counts run full. So if you bet Page, you're happy about what's going on. If you're Manhasset, this is a killer. You know, you're making a, a little bit of a comeback, and then, again, the fielding error is just haunting them this entire game, as that one's ripped foul, and it's a 3-2 count now for Popoff. Ziggy Cohen would be next. Already two runs home in the inning. Peter Scala. Getting ready for the payoff pitch. And we'll do it again. So this is something we've seen Popov do today. He has worked these pitchers pretty well, and he, that's something you want out of the two hole. Now top of the lineup is put the ball in play for Beth Page, and they forced Manhasset to make plays. This one popped up right side of the diamond. It's Gorillo, the first baseman, and he makes the catch. And the inning is over, but Beth Page adds to their lead as they take an 8-4 lead. Go into the sixth on the Varsity Media Sports Network. You're watching Varsity Media, the premier high school sports network in New York. High school sports fans, Varsity Media Pass is the exclusive live stream partner of Nassau County Playoffs. For semifinal and championship coverage of boys and girls lacrosse, softball, and baseball, head to varsitymediapass.com to order. Varsity Media is the home for New York high school sports. Hey parents, how about a bobblehead for your athlete? Bobbleheads are one of the most preferred personalized gift items today, and it's so easy to order. All you need is a photo of your athlete, a model number from our extensive collection of bobbleheads, and the sculpting process begins. Two proofs are sent for your approval, and once it's approved, in a few weeks, your bobblehead is on the way. It's that simple. Order your bobblehead today by logging into varsitymediapass.com and click catalogs, or call 516 403 2050. Welcome you back to Beth Page High School. An 8 4 lead for the Golden Eagles in the top of the sixth inning as Mike Macholtz came on and got a ground out of Mateo Karsic to end the threat for Manhasset after scoring two runs. That made it 6 to 4, and then Beth Page getting those two runs back as they lead it now by four in the later stages of the game. He's Rob Anderson. I'm John Perez. This has been a fun one, and uh, we've got Golden Eagles, and we've got a couple of golden geese out in center field as well. I think they've got the permit now as we get closer to the 7 o'clock hour here at Bethpage High School. Three back in, three and the minute you said it, I immediately thought of uh, Veruca Salt out there, the golden geese. I want my goose to play gold eggs for Easter. Coming to bat from Manhasset. I was thinking of Number Iron three, Maiden, you know, two minutes to midnight. The golden goose is on the loose. The golden goose is on the loose. And we don't have a reason. That That's all. A little metalhead like <laughs> our producer, Chris, Chris Sweeney, over there. I'm going Willy Wonka, and you're going Iron Maiden. Yeah. So, Mack holds on the mound, and we saw in the last inning, John, we were talking about the kid throws heat relied on that fastball primarily in that last inning and we'll see what he comes out with here but in the sixth inning has a chance to keep his team in the lead a little bit more of a cushion than last time he was on the mound last time he was there he's 
up by two, now up by four. As Lucas Lirian re-enters and now steps back up to the plate against Mackholtz. First time facing the Golden Eagles reliever. As Mackholtz against Resto walking a strikeout. And a fastball, knee high for a strike, one and one. Real nice job framing that ball too back there. Get that strike. Yeah, Luparello's called a good game behind the plate. Pretty solid catcher. Comes to 1-1. One, one. High and outside, 2-1. and one. Yeah, he really does help his pitches. You can see he, he frames the ball very well position-wise. He gets his glove where he wants it. And his pitcher so far doing the job. You know, Resta just kind of ran out of steam but had a heck of a game. Fastball on the inner half. In the county even at 2-2. Two and two. And that's an unhittable fastball. That's one you want to get all day. At the knees, a little bit inside. It's a beautiful pitch. Especially with Leary and crowding the plate. The number six hitter here to lead off the top of the sixth inning. 2-2 two -two coming. Fastball on the outside corner. Got him looking. First punch out for Matt Colts, and there's one away to begin the sixth. And the second in a row that caught Leary and looking. And we'll take a look at it here. Big wind up, big kick. And maybe a little off the plate, but look good. That brings up Luke Gorillo, a strikeout and a uh, ground out and two at-bats. And a first pitch fastball below the knees for ball one. What do you think all those stickers are on his helmet there? Little gold stars to get a hit or something? Or? Probably, and a lot of that has to do with being a good teammate and um, doing little things, and you accumulate that throughout the season, so... Um, whether it's picking up your uh, mates as well or just, uh, you're right. I'd imagine if it has to do with hits, then Gorillo had a ton of them last year. Here's a 1-1. Fastball car foul off to the right side and actually went through the screen and now is on top of the webbing. How about that? Yeah, that one's going to stay up there for now. No souvenir for the crowd. Well, listen, in a week filled with science, especially meteorology, I'd love to know the physics on how that ball got up there. It was the eclipse. Yeah. One, two, misses downstairs. Two balls and two strikes. Yeah, no gaps up there at all. You kind of look at... Hey, listen, play the lotto. Here's Mackholtz. And that's downstairs again. So Mackholtz trying to command that fastball. That's what he does. I mean, he's not keeping anybody guessing. It's fastball after fastball, just about location. And when he's on, he hits it. 3-2 pitch. In the air, down the right field line, giving chase as Will Lynn towards the line, dives and can't make the catch. It was a long run for Lynn, who was shaded towards right center field. And just didn't have enough hang time, and that keeps the at-bat alive for Gorillo. Yeah, Lynn got the initial jump, and then as he was going towards it, he kind of held up a little bit, maybe looking at that scoreboard in front of him. Wasn't too far away from the scoreboard, but just out of his reach, and that's enough to keep this at-bat alive. Three balls, two strikes, one out, the pitch. Lined over to first. From a knee is Leonardo. Takes it to the bag himself. Two up, two down to begin the sixth. Good job by Leonardo to lean to his right and get that ball. Big man going down for it and making the play look easy. Having come in has it, number 13, third baseman, James Rowan. And so this will bring up James Rowan. Rowan re-entering the game after Jack Kamara came on as a pinch hitter. And Rowan takes a first pitch strike, nothing in one. Yeah, it was an interesting decision. He did pinch hit for him. He, it wasn't a defensive replacement. Came in and hit. And now Rowan re-entering the game to get his spot back. Fastball misses low in the count one and one. And his low and at bat, he grounded out. And it was uh, Kamara struck out looking last time. So we'll see if Rowan can get something going here for his Manhasset Indians. And Rowan, a young player at that, and Anthony Sarapika said that we know his glove can play at third base. If he hits, it's just gravy. And I think that's going to be the biggest tale for a lot of his 
uh, newcomers as well. You obviously want the fielding base to be there, and if you're going to hit, you could grind out games. And this is a Manhasset team that is pretty athletic uh, on the base paths as well and could be in a lot of close ball games. But they see themselves trailing 8-4, one ball, two strikes, two outs. Top half of the sixth, and a fastball sits low, and the count even at 2-2. Two and two. Well, they do have Zafiro up at the top of that order, and he's had a, a great game. You know he can hit. And the guys at the top of the order, the first three, know how to work the count. You know, you've seen them take pitches, foul off pitches. 2-2. Two, two. Got him looking. Fastball dots the outer half. Two strikeouts in the inning for Mike Mackholz. We go to the bottom of the sixth. 8 4 Beth Page on the Varsity Media Sports Network. Are you a local business looking for new and creative ways to promote your company? Varsity Media offers affordable rates that can get your message across to a demographic of 18 to 54 years of age. Our follower base across social media is over 50,000 strong and our viewership numbers per game are in the thousands. Don't blow your advertising budget on old staples like TV and radio media. Reach out to Varsity Media to get the best bang for your buck. Varsity Media is offering a video folder that you can customize to meet your needs. A photo of your athlete can be elegantly placed in the front panel. Essential statistics with a biography can be printed on the inside panel, and videos can be downloaded and viewed on an LCD screen for as long as two hours. The attractive video folder can be placed on a coffee table and instantly becomes a conversation starter. Order your video folder today by logging into varsitymediapass.com and click catalogs or give us a call at 516-403-2050. Welcome you back to Beth Page High School as Peter Scala back out on the mound with Beth Page leading 8 to 4 and trying to keep it in a four-run deficit and a new third baseman for Manhasset as Brendan Mataratona, he comes in for James Rowan. And defensively, Manhasset just trying to get three outs and give themselves a chance in the top of the seventh inning. But Scala's got his work cut out for him. He's going to deal to the heart of the order. Ziggy Cohen, Vito Leonardo, and Joey Luparella, 3-4-5, do up in the order for Beth Page. It's a little roulette over at third base. You had... Uh the third time that position's been substituted for. And because of that, now Rowan is out of the game. Right. You can re-enter once, and then once you're either pinch run for or just subbed out again, that's it. You're done. And that one hit Cohen right in the backside. That's going to leave a mark. You heard that one from here, and... Uh, not how you want to now get on base. The page, the first baseman, number 22, Vito Leonardo. And that's the second time that he's been hit by a pitch today. John, he got hit in his first at bat, popped out in the second, got on on an error, and hit by a pitch again. So doing it the hard way today, an error and two hit by pitches. And he'll get a runner in for him now. Cone, yeah, and that's going to be Joe Calori. Joe Calori, who was the starting center fielder, now coming on as a runner for Cohen. And so Cohen's saying it just hit right above um, the tailbone. And uh, Joe I don't know how many times you've been hit there, Rob, but uh, it's never easy. So now the DH spot is gone as Calori comes on. Cohen was the DH, so... Uh, Kalari, the short-fielded center fielder. And, of course, when you're up four runs, they will have the lead going into the seventh inning. Now you just want to get speed on the base paths. And um, for Beth Page, just help your cause that way defensively and on the base paths, looking for their first win of the day. And you mentioned Cohen's been hit twice. It's now the third hit batsman uh, by Manhasset pitching. Yeah, getting hit, like you said, getting hit in that spot's not a pleasant spot to get hit. All bone. Throwing over, trying to get Glory. Good job diving back in there. So obviously worried about a stolen base at this point. As it gets a little darker here in Beth Page, it's dropped about 12 degrees since the start of the game. As Vito Leonardo skies it high and out of play. Just over us into the lacrosse field. 
Beth Page Faithful behind us, all bundled up. Blankets are out. Hot chocolates. You gotta love April baseball. <laughs> if you don't love it, you wouldn't be out here today, I'll tell you that. No, 100%. <laughs> but we started out a little sun. And when that sun's out here, it's wonderful. Sun goes away. and We saw the moon, too. So the moon peeking out. Bernardo skies it. Left side of the diamond. Trey Zafiro on the outfield. Grass makes the catch. One away. Zafiro doing a good job calling it off and getting over there. Number two, Joey Luparello. So with a runner on first base right now, hit by pitch, Cohen and Calori running. It's going to be Luparello. And he got on with a walk and fly out and ground it out. So 0 for 2 on the day. And of course, calling the game behind the plate. As that one goes over, Luparello's dome, throw down to second, and Calori dives in ahead of the tag. A real gratuitous bounce off the backstop. I mean, that was, you couldn't write that any better. It took a hop right back up. You get a look at Calori over there. And a quick throw down but a hop and uh, unable to hold on to it. So and it's just wild pitch. Yeah, fourth wild pitch. No. no. Upstairs. 2-0. and oh. And John, if there's time in the video room, I guess this that's the kind of thing you look at at this game. You go back and you just try to look at the unforced errors that you could try to take advantage of, work on. And it's a long season. At that, and that's something that Anthony Sarapica and Manhasset knows. You don't want to drop the first of a series. Throw down to second, and he dropped the ball. Trey Safiro looks like the throw was there in time to get Kalori, but Safiro didn't have the baseball. And so Kalori, with a deep sigh of relief, is back at second base. Yeah, it was a good spin move, a nice pickoff move there. And it, like you said, John, I think the ball definitely got there, but mishandled again. And it enables Kalori to stay alive down there at second base. As Luparello settles in, 2-0 count. This one hit on the ground to second. Lucas Leary ends up with it, flips the first. For out number two as Calori goes over to third. So moving the runner into a little bit of a better scoring position there for Will Lynn. And Lynn with a hit in the last inning. That led off the inning and he came around to score. Yeah, he's come around to score twice, hit by a pitch, reached on an error, and then a single up the middle. Yeah, Lynn having a, a quietly effective game. Made a real nice play in the outfield, a nice catch earlier, and on base all three times. A threat on the bases keeps the pitchers, you know, paying attention throughout the entire game. So getting uh, some good work out of the sixth spot today. Kalori would be the ninth Beth Page run. And a throw down to third. It skips into the outfield. Here comes a throw to the plate. And it gets past the catcher bat. And Kalori comes in to score. 9 4 Beth Page. Manhasset is treating the baseball like a hand grenade. I, I have no word. I mean, I appreciate. We'll take a look here. And, and you know, it's, it's a decent throw. And wasn't going to get him and then the throw to the plate looked like they had all day and hits the, the, the dirt and no play at the plate you know at this point I mean do you throw the pickoff anymore yeah no you're right 100% is especially down four and you got a chance to have a little damage control and the way the ball's been bouncing off gloves I mean I just well, you always hear coaches say that if you're going to have a play involved at third, you better make it. And whether that's trying to take third base with uh, less than two outs, if you're on the base paths, or even just trying to pick off throw, you have to know that runner is dead to rights or that you've got the bag yourself. And listen, Parker Madden has showed that he's got a good arm. But I don't know that you can trust everybody in making these plays. The ball got dropped twice at second base, and then the missed throw down at the plate, and it looked like there was time to get him at the plate. And I think Madden's done a real good job in this game. Popped up, third base side, 
Brendan Materatona, the third baseman. First opportunity, and he handles it flawlessly. And the inning is over. But Beth Page adds an insurance run as they look to pick up the win when we come back on the Varsity Media Sports Network. You're watching the Varsity Media Sports Network, the home for New York high school sports. Varsity Media offers live streaming services for any sport. With human beings behind the camera, you can expect the proper coverage angles during each game. We offer customizable options such as live scoreboard, multiple cameras, instant replay, graphics, and even announcers. Find out how you can save $100 off a live stream package with Varsity Media by calling 516-403-2050 or email Ben at Varsity Media. Did you just have the best athletic year of your life and now you want to show it off to college coaches? Well, let Varsity Media help you. Varsity Media's college recruiting videos show off your unique skills to help you land a spot on the team of your dream school. We'll provide music, spot shadow effects, and a link to send to your next coach. Contact us today for more information. Don't rely on word of mouth or cold emails. Let Varsity Media help you take your game to the next level. Vinny Mastrangelo is the new right fielder for Beth Page as they lead it 9-4 to four here in the top of the seventh inning. He's Rob Anderson. I'm John Perez. Golden Eagles looking for their first win of the year. They lost to Division and Plain Edge by a combined 18-1 to one score, but now have a 9-4 lead over a young Manhasset team. And Mike Mackholtz looking for the final three outs of this contest. And, you know, Rob, it wasn't the cleanest of games, and obviously we still have – a half inning to go, but for Beth Page, confidence boosting, and it just goes to show that if you put the ball in play and press the agenda, uh, good things can happen for you. Yeah, for sure. They, they did get the ball in play, and they got a little help from Manhasset, but their pitcher is also showing that they can get the ball over the plate. Uh, like Coach said, when Rusty gets that curveball going, it's, it's a tough pitch to hit, and he got it going today. The fielders did their job. Some nice plays out there. And Mack Holtz coming in the game and just throwing strikes, and that's what you want, especially at this point in the game. Up by five, get him over the plate, force the Indians to try to score. And Gavin Corfine wears one on the front foot. That one stings in this weather, and a hit batsman will lead it off in the top of the seventh inning. Not the way you want to start this one for either one of them. Corfine does find a way to get on base, and that's going to bring up Trey. Zafiro. Zafiro having a heck of a game. Grounded out in his first at bat, but since then, two hits came around to score twice. He's had a great game, John. Yeah, and has really shown off the athletic ability, and can't wait to see what he is on the mound. He'll get the start on Thursdays this year, and like we mentioned, this is the first of a three-game set. Monday, Tuesday, Thursday are the typical public school three-game sets, and then, of course, non-league games. Uh, on the weekend. Here's the 1-0. That flutters outside, 2-0. Hey and you can see the respect his team gives him even in the field. When he's out there, if he's calling the ball, everybody backs off. Even when he took that, he ran out of into foul territory to try to get one. He had a long run. But Zafiro, a respected member of this team and earns it on the field. So it is the seventh inning, but Beth Page does get an opportunity if Manhasset can put five or more on the board. Well, we'll see because it is getting dark here. There's no lights at the baseball stadium. And, you know, that's the one thing, too. A lot of times, if you don't give ample opportunity to the home field, uh, to the home team, that you revert the score back to the previous inning. And in that case, Beth Page was leading 8-4. to four at the time. So, yeah, I mean, has to try to spark a rally, and you'd have to imagine if they get the lead, I don't know, you never want to give away at-bats, but you want to give your uh, defense and pitching a chance to lock it down. Right, absolutely, and that's uh, a tough spot. We'll see what they get going, though. It's a 3-1 count now here to Zafiro. Runner on first. Mike Mackholtz came on in the fifth inning, got a ground out, and then retired three in a row before hitting Gavin Corfine. And now a timeout taken 
at the plate as Zafiro steps out and steps back in. Short lead off of first and the 3-1 pitch on the outside corner and the count is full. Good control there by Mackles to get that. B2. Diorazio to pop off over to first, skips away. They get the out at second, but now you exchange the second base runners. So Corfine's retired. Zafiro goes over to second. There's one away, and that'll bring up Parker Madden. No error because you can't assume a double play, so now it's a fielder's choice. Number 12, Four, six. Catcher. Parker Madden. One of those old rules in baseball, never assume that double play. Well, you know what happens when you assume is that's lasered over to the backstop, but no advancement by Zafiro. That's lasered over to the backstop, but no advancement by Zafiro. Count one and oh. If you assume, you get a full eclipse. Yep. One out. That's low and in. The ball's no strikes. I'll tell you, the, the swing, the Zafiro swing, it looked like it was going to be a ball to you. That went a little low. But he was determined to get a hit there. 2-0 coming. That's downstairs, 3-0. and Mike Mackholz is trying to find the strike zone and get these final two outs. Get Beth Page their first win of the year. And then he pours in a fastball, 3-1. There it is, he knows his job. He's just gotta get it over the plate. Nothing cute, let his defense try to do their job. Like you said earlier, they've done a pretty decent job today, limiting any kind of damage. 3-1, popped foul down the right field line and that should reach the bullpen. And the count is three and two. Tip of the hat there to Leonardo. He made that long run even though he didn't have a shot. He was barreling down there. Well, that's one of the advantages, especially for Beth Page and knowing the field. There's a lot of real estate down the right field line. Three balls, two strikes, one out. 9-4, Beth Page lead the pitch. Curveball hit on the ground to third, one hopper. Walters, he'll tag the runner, and he gets Zafiro. Zafiro out on the base pass, ought to play in front of him. That wipes the bases clean. And now last opportunity for Manhasset. As Tyler had Zimiatis, comes up to the plate and take another look, Rob. Yeah, if you get a look here, it was a ground ball, and honestly, it's just a poor running play. You know, if the ball's hit to the left side of the field, you usually hold up, force the uh, third baseman to make that throw and get the out, and then either decide to run or go back. Now but Manhattan, just following 21. through with that run, and Zafiro's tagged out pretty Iowa easily. Had and as you said, just trade runner at first, but now two outs on fielder's choices. You don't see that tag out very often, John. No, not at all. And here's Tyler Hadziatis. And a first pitch fastball tucks up and in, 1-0. and oh. Hadziatis responsible for a lot of the offense today. He's driven in two runs, an RBI single in the third, and a sack fly in the fifth. Also got the start for Manhasset and has to duck out of the way of a high fastball. A little chin music, count 2-0. and oh. Or I guess back of the dome music. <laughs> Two zero for Mac Holtz. That's downstairs. Three and zero. Morell did everything he could there to frame that up, but umpire wasn't fighting. Three and zero, Mackholtz. Pitching from behind on all three batters, and gets a strike, and the count three and one. Well, I mean the one consolation for Mackholtz, and of course it's easier said than done, is he can groove a pitch right over to the middle, and Hadzianis can hit this to Syosset. It still wouldn't give Manhasset the lead. There's a wave and a miss, and now Manhasset down to their final strike. And I think that swing he was aiming for Syosset. Yeah. Big cut there by Hadzianis. 
full count. Kind of, I mean, this is what this kid's done the entire inning. Beth Page won 17 games a year ago. They're looking for win number one, and we'll have to wait a little bit longer. A two-out walk. Hadzianis reaches base for the second time today. John, that was almost the same exact situation and it bat as Zafiro, except Zafiro swung at that one and got the ground ball. But literally 3-0, came back, got it to 3-2, pitched that low fastball. Zafiro swung and uh, Mike Diorio. And so Mike Diorio steps up to the plate. He had a booming shot to right field his last time up. Trying to keep this game going and watches a fastball high and away for ball one. Diorio, that two RBI double, his lone hit on the day. He walked, stole a base, and was stranded at third in the second inning. Also popped out to the third baseman in his second at bat. 1 0. That's low, 2 0. Mackelt's trying to find the light at the end of the tunnel. Here's the 2-0, right down the middle for a strike, 2-1. and one. That was a nice pitch there, and you can tell Diorio wished he had another shot at that one. 2-1 coming. That one outside, and the count 3-1. and one. You know, Rob Fisher doesn't want to bring in any more pitchers, especially with the darkness and you just don't want to burn an arm either, especially in the first game of a three-game set. Yeah, it's getting dark out here, and it's going to be tough to even play some ground balls at this point. Well, and that's it. Fisher's going to come out. And talk to his pitcher as Diorio reaches base, and the bases are loaded. And I'm guessing Fisher right here is just going to, you know, more or less ask him, hey, can you throw strikes, you know, up oh, or not? No, he's not. He's going to say, I'm going to give it to Charlie Ferranti. All right. I didn't see Ferranti move up. He, uh, warm up. He was warming up a little earlier. Yeah. Ferranti's warming up, and we'll take a break. When we come back, Ferranti looks for the final out of the Varsity Media Sports Network. Dante does it again. Defensive play. Dante Zadaro. Ilico ties it up. By Diaso steps up and scores. The jump shot for Nell. Are you a local business looking for new and creative ways to promote your company? Varsity Media offers affordable rates that can get your message across to a demographic of 18 to 54 years of age. Our follower base across social media is over 50,000 strong and our viewership numbers per game are in the thousands. Don't blow your advertising budget on old staples like TV and radio media. Reach out to Varsity Media to get the best bang for your buck. Charlie Ferranti comes on in a hot spot with the bases loaded and a 9-4 lead for yeah, Beth Page. Manhasset, the DH, trying to get the 16, final out Mateo against Carson. Manhasset. Mateo Karsic stands in the way from win number one for the Golden Eagles. Ferranti, only a sophomore, throws the ball well. And uh, Rob Fisher says he's a player that by the time he's a senior, the offers will be piling up. He says he's a star in the making. Dealing to Mateo Karsic, who's 0 for 3 on the day in a first pitch fastball. And at the knees for a strike, nothing in one. I have a feeling, John, there's going to be a fairly generous strike zone here. You know, you saw the umpire talking to Fisher. A 1 fastball. That glazes outside, 1 and 1. About how dark it is right now. Everybody's aware of the situation. And again, as you said, if the game stopped, it would be a Beth Page victory, but they want him to win it on the field. Of course, as Ferranti out of the windup. Here's the 1-1. One -one. Fastball hit on the ground at first. Leonardo's up with it. He'll take it to the bag himself, and the Golden Eagles win it. Charlie Ferranti comes on and gets the final out of the game as Beth Page picks up their first victory of the year to improve to 1-2. and two. 
Joe Resta gets the win after starting it off. He went four and two thirds of an inning, only allowing three earned runs on six hits, three strikeouts, as Beth Page had big innings in the fourth and fifth inning to win it nine to four over Manhattan. And John, I think what you saw today is uh, a Manhattan team that's got some kinks to work out, but they've got some heart and they've got uh, Hatzianis and the top of the order, Zafiro, looking really good so far. Youngster's got to pick it up. And on the Beth Page side, some pitching depth. Pitchers look great today. Resta looked really good. They've got some speed on the bags. Congratulations to the Golden Eagles for getting their first win. And we survived the eclipse of 2024. Yeah, but no daylight left. And that does it uh, here. But it was a fun one as Beth Page wins it 9-4. to four here on the Varsity Media Sports Network for our executive producer, Ben Turchin. Technical director is Chris Sweeney. Ron Pierre and Travis DeLuise giving you the moving images. For my compañero and partner, Rob Anderson, this is John Perez saying so long from Bethpage High School. This has been a presentation of Nassau County Baseball on your home for New York's high school sports, the Varsity Media Sports Network.